Have a night. Let's go, guys. I've got 15 mirrors of materials. All right, uh, this is uh, going for anyone that's uh, coming here to check out the VOD. Uh, I know I just went over this with stream, but we just restarted stream. So for anyone that's coming here for the VOD, guys, uh, just to check out a crafting session, we have prepared this entire tab is Crate Chimeros, 576. Another 504 Crate Chimeros. That's 1,080 Crate Chimeros. I also rolled an entire stash tab of imprints, which you can see here. Uh, we also have... Um, 5.4 million vivid life force, and we have 300 sacred life force as well as 200 divines. What we're going to be doing is trying to hit a T1, T1, T2 bow or better, uh, using a method that is uh, a little bit different than what uh, most do, as well as uh, myself. Uh, shout out to my buddy Synth Crafter. This is uh, something that I'd actually tried in the past that I kind of forgot about because the numbers didn't work out, and he told me to look at it, and I'd forgotten about it. So without him, I wouldn't have uh, checked that out. But uh, I did the, I ran the numbers and the math on this is very promising. Uh, I ran a preliminary test earlier uh, and over the first hour, uh, I was able to hit T1, T1, T4 uh, twice, uh, as well as make a total of four augments um, with uh, two like merciless plus either, um, uh, uh, you know, flaring. So um, definitely a more efficient method. And it's one that is quite fun to watch because it is very rapid paced, despite the high cost per craft. Um, it is much better viewing experience. So hopefully this video is fun. Um, if, uh, if, if we do end up hitting, hopefully it serves as a, a fun record of that. And if not, uh, maybe something to check out just to see what we're doing. But, um, yeah, I'll give you guys a minute to, to kind of funnel in here and, uh, I'm going to have a cigarette quickly while, while people roll in and then, uh, we'll get going boys. Put a curse on me. All right, man. Cool. It's all good. <clears throat> the difference between winners and losers. They don't let people's actions impact them either way. Put a put a put a blessing, put a curse, end of day, I'll be me, you be you. All right.
Okay. Smell that? It smells like goat time, baby. I'm um, taking a piss and let's get started. All right. Okay. Bro, I love you. I love it too, buddy. <laughs> Just kidding. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, let's get it, guys. Um, go time. Boom. Is that tier eight? As I said, guys, this is going to go real quick. Rapid fire. So far, we have spent 11 to 12 divines in the past minute. 14 divines. 16.5. I'm not going to do an active count here, but we just spent 25 divines in the past minute there. To give you some idea of what this is going to be like. We've got about 12 mirrors worth of stuff ready, so this is going to be uh, uh, unlike the past couple days where I've been doing this, you know, with the traditional method. We're doing this near, ooh, T1 attack speed. Pretty. Doesn't matter. Fuck out of here. I'm a little unlucky with the annuls so far, but that'll level out. Spent about 100 divines already. Music on. Uh, I can't put music. Oh shit, the game sounds are my mistake. I'll put the game sounds on. Pardon me, but gentlemen, I restarted stream so it switched the. Uh... Oh, that's weird. Oh no, it is the TV. Um... Hmm. The game sounds are on. Okay. I can make it a bit higher, maybe, so it doesn't sound quiet. That's better. The 
It's really, really loud for me, but it's okay. Sounds are playing off my TV right now, so that's why I added it lower. Okay, so uh, what I'm actually going to need, guys, a bunch of. Uh, I forgot about this earlier. Uh, Farouk, maybe you can help me buy these. I'll pay you for it, obviously. Uh, situations like this, right? So you uh, you guys have been paying attention. We've been doing the multi-mod phase leech. When we have one like this where we annul it off, as I mentioned earlier, in case you're just tuning in, uh, rather than wiping this and then doing multi-mod, what we can do instead is just put an aspect. Uh, I didn't, that's the one thing I forgot to prepare, though, so we're going to need some aspect to... Uh, Beasts. Um, I don't have any on me at the moment, I don't think. No, I don't. Okay, so let's look for Saka Wall or Krachen, because those are typically cheaper. Krachen. Yeah, one chaos each. Fucking love it. Yeah, so we in this situation, we spend one chaos instead of, or four chaos or whatever, instead of uh, two divines. So. That's going to make a, a reasonable difference. We're not going to get it that often. Um, oh, fuck. I don't have any chaos. you got to be kidding me. Shit. How many do you have? Uh, if someone's online or watching right now that's in guild, um, and you are able, can you just throw a couple chaos in the guild stash for me? Uh, or a divine word? And I'll, uh, I'll put a divine in. And... Oh, he's got it. We're good. Uh, ten Krachens is a good amount, too. Uh, we should be. That should cover us for a little while. Uh, this one as well. Buying it like this, the boss, you don't have to actually go kill him, so. Uh, this one, uh, you don't have to, like, go down to the, de the depths like we did this earlier, uh, just before I went to have a smoke. And uh, I had to go down into the depths to do it. We don't have to do that this time. Oop. Holy fuck, that's so loud. Okay, I, I got... Wait, where's the bow? I right, turn my TV down. The sound balance when you play PoE out of a TV, but my TV was at fucking 15 out of 100, and it was like there's... It's crazy. Felt like I was watching a Michael Bay film. Eager. Discharge go burr. Uh, I did. I had some temp orbs earlier, but I sold them all, fortunately. We'll see. Just to glance over the resources again, guys. 5.4 million life force. Uh, and these are all creature chimerals. Uh, 576 creatures there. 504 more creatures. Again, 5.4 million life force. 300 life force. And a series of imprints. Nutty crafting method. Thanks, pal. All right, let's get it. Oh, I'm going to take off my claw, too. If I have to go kill stuff, can somebody remember to put on my claw? Because I actually forgot to do that earlier. The reason for that being if I hold alt like this, uh, I can see what's going on still. Whereas if I uh, if I do it elsewhere, like, I think it's actually this one specifically. I don't know. Where is it where it does that? That's strange. Anyway, sometimes it shows both of them at the same time. It's super annoying. Okay.
Hey, caramba, we're getting pretty unlucky with the, uh, nulls. Fuck sakes. Augments, too, have been disproportionately hitting uh, the Merciless. The amount of fucking annuls, though, that have removed the multi mod is driving me nuts. <laughs> two divs each time, but it's the two divs, is, it's cheaper rather than imprinting it back and getting the multi mod than having to regal again. Two mod, or, you know, with the price of Kratrix, it's cheaper to do it like this. Whoop, tier four. This is ridiculous. Remove the middle fucking mod for once. Uh, anyways, from a viewer experience, come on. From a viewer side, have you guys noticed that the last five augments have all hit merciless? It doesn't matter because I would have had to annul them anyway, but five times in a row it's removed merciless, which is a one in four. Uh. Fuck sakes, okay. Uh, from a viewer perspective, though, and I did test this for an hour earlier, I was told that this is, and I can imagine it too, because it's a lot more fun to craft for me. Nice. That's exactly what we're going for. Tier 9, perfect. And we know that. Fucking fantastic. Uh, it should be uh, a pretty fun, uh, pretty fun watch for a while here, because... Jesus Christ. As you can see, it is... What the... There we go. That is the first time we've had it properly annulled, I think, and... Oh shit, I'm out of fucking... Okay, whatever, we'll use late mana. Um, I do need... Oh shit, no, I need both of them. I need chance orbs. Uh, do I have any fuse? Yes, I have fuse. Okay, let me just buy them in town. One sec. Does T1, T1, T1 exist? Yes, it does. But it's held by TFT. And... I would love... I would love to make a easy or free access bow. That gets rid of TFT's RMT source. 85%, 75 to 85% of all mirrors used. Is my game crashing now? Come on, man. 75 to 85% of all uh, fucking mirrors used are... Uh, uh, okay, my stream just crashed again, and the game... This is goddamn ridiculous. What is going on? I have to pull, I'll pull up my phone. If stream's still going, I can see there's over a hundred of you here, so uh, I'll keep it going. Um, I'll just pull up chat on my phone. Can I get a confirmation if uh, if you guys can still see things? You guys can still see. Yeah, it looks like chat's still going. All right, I'll pull the game back up. Yeah, you guys can all see. Okay. Can see you in the black background. <laughs> Thank you. Nobody ever addresses my mulatto side. Yeah, the game, yeah, the game crashed. That's cool. Yeah. All right, that's one way to get to town, I suppose. Goodbye, fusing orbs. I never needed you anyways. It's funny when you prepare like 12 mirrors of crafting ingredients. And the one thing you're missing is chance orbs. Love it. Okay. Oh shit, annuls. I need annuls. I'm about to run out of annuls. Uh, Farouk, can you get me 10 divines of annuls? Uh, just send me a DM. Uh, like PM me and I'll give you 10 divines. Uh, 
Uh, the one time where this might be interrupted at a certain point, guys. Uh, almost certainly, actually. I'll have to run some imprints at some point. As you can see, I've got all the fucking beasts ready, but... Uh, imprints there is unfortunately no way to do to get them but to run them yourself imprints are not tradable so you can't have anyone uh, obviously anyone else do it are you not online or are you just really slow at messaging jesus are you hello Baruch. Okay, so go do it. Sorry guys, one second here. Hold on to those, Farouk. I'll be back to grab them. I'm. I already messaged someone, so I'll grab t 20 divines of them, I guess. I need to respond quicker next time, so I don't do that. Okay. Uh, wait, how many is 10? 425. <sighs> Same bot, yeah. Oh shit, my phone's on low power mode. Okay. Alright. Is there a way that I can have chat up without having the video up? Because that would bring my phone much faster. You guys know? Wonder if that's possible. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, sorry, 75 to 85% of, of all mirrors are used on fizz bows or bows in general. Um, and so if someone were to make an open source bow, uh, kind of like what I'm trying to do here. Now, I do have people that gave me money that invested, but um, so like I got to pay them back at the very least. But if I can cover like paying them back, like say we do fees on like the first 10 or something like that or whatever. I don't, I don't know. I had to talk to them because they're involved on this. Not equally, but they've all put in money. Um if you were to put a bow up like this that was too or if, if i end up getting something like t1 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 uh and you were to make that open source so people could come and mirror it either for free or for very cheap uh like you know not something that's like two mirrors but something like 100 divines where it's you know it's sensible uh given the fact that it costs like 50 mirrors to make um if aside from the fact it would prevent tft from you know monopolizing things and, and price gouging uh if the accusations about rmt were indeed the case uh that would be about 85 percent of their revenue source so um it would be uh it would be it would it would legitimately shake up like and there's a substantial difference by the way between a uh a t1 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 bow and like a t1 t1 t4 bow even if a lot of people go and mirror a t1 t1 t4 bow the people that are going to mirror a t1 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 uh, it's a completely different market uh those are the people that are going to be rmting largely uh because they want perfect so if you had something like that taken away it would uh it would fundamentally shake up the uh, the pretense or the presence of that uh, especially on standard two where most of it takes place all right oh fuck yeah boys that's how you do it can i get a hell yeah from chat can i get a hell yeah from chat look at that we talk about some noble shit we get rewarded with a nice little flaring roll bitch let's go and now you can see it's already ready guys and this is why this is why we do it like this, guys. Because look, now it's already got multi-mod and it's already got the mana leech. So now all I need to do is put on prefixes can't be changed. Oh. So we don't have to pay to scour it. We don't have to annul when the flaring's there. Get it, baby? We get it, baby? Power to the people, bitches. Let's go. Now T1 again? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know how it goes, brother. Don't worry. Uh, just so you guys are aware how much I've been putting in this so far. It is 8,438 divines, guys. 8,438 divines. That's a nice one. Oh, look at that, boys. A perfect fucking fizz roll. <laughs> a perfect high-end fizz roll, I should say. We're talking 1,300 DPS without attack speed or hybrid. 
1300 to 1300 pdps without attack speed or high risk um it's a nice little looking guy all right boys okay so i know this is really inconvenient when people watch this and people tend to leave in flocks when i do it so i think this is fair every time we get it to because i smoke and i know it always bothers people when i leave to go smoke but i, I like i know i don't need to but it's something that's going to happen when i get to every time i get a bow to a phase that it's ready to augment like this i gotta have a cigarette is that fair fuck my phone's about to die there all right so i'm, I'm gonna hit the augment button here guys I don't want to make you sit around and wait for me. I don't think that that's very, I do that normally, but I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit and then I'm going to have a cigarette and then I'm going to come back and we're going to keep doing it. As I said, guys, it's rapid fire, right? So we're going to get these every like probably 10 minutes. We're going to have it to this phase. Okay. It's uh, one, roughly one in 60 to have to hit it from here. Smoke inside. I can't, I get kicked out of my condo if I do. Uh, I actually, I got to update the crafting thing too. So we've already hit the flaring four times and we're ready for our fifth augment. Augment number five, flaring hit number 16. Uh, yesterday, ready? Where I live in Toronto, 1850 a pack. All right, ready boys? I'm not even gonna look, okay? I'm not even gonna look. I'm gonna hit it and run outside to smoke. So it'll be a surprise when I come back. Let's go.
Okay, okay, big money, big money, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Fucking whammy. Big whammy, the worst whammy of all the whammies in the land. Sorry, I had to get a phone charger. Uh, because if I'm going to use my phone for check, fuck, I don't have an open socket. Uh, what are these plugged into? Um, yeah, I can unplug the lamp, but let's see. I have an overhead light. Don't worry, I'll get that in a sec. Okay, let me get the light. Curtain, <laughs> some peeping toms. Man, my boy Tom got given my boy my boy Tom got a got a raw deal. Yeah. I'm a god amongst men. Let's get a fuck yeah chat. Let's get a fuck yeah chat. All skill. All skill. Don't even have to pay for the MetaMod again. I gotta update my data. Okay, so we get six augments. Augments, we get six. We gotta add to our list here. We got, uh, what do we get? Which leech do we get there? It's Fizz Leech, right? Yeah, Fizz Leech. Technically, boys. Technically, boys. I gotta have another cigarette. Because we fam. You gotta be kidding me, man. Fuck you, chat. It's all your fault, chat. Yo, we just got double whammy. Oh, man. I'm just gonna show you guys the odds on that quickly. Uh, to hit that, boys, is a... It's a 1,000 out of... 37 or 4775. So 21%. So 21% times 21%. Four percent chance for that to happen back to back. Four percent chance. Four point four percent. Fucking whammies. Goodbye. No use crying over spilt milk, though. Keep pushing, baby. No, I gotta mark down the sorry. Mark that down again. Fizz leech, fizz leech. Uh, and the augment, we are now four for seven. There we go. Welcome to PoE. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Pretty new to the game. Uh, RMT all these. Look at that. Oh, they're not even circumcised either. Yeah. Oh, who still got the head on there? Oh, look at the head. Yeah. All right.
Fuck you. I forgot to update this total augments seven. But don't fret, gentlemen. Uh, the cool thing about this method, aside from the fact it's very expensive, uh, uh, it actually, on, on the, the whole, it is much cheaper. Nice, we gotta keep the meta mod. Look at that, fucking solid. Um, it, this is actually about a, a third to... A third to a quarter of the cost, when you look at the long term of the craft. We have disproportionately though, that augment, we are, it doesn't matter because we're getting low tier on this. Like the, when we hit flaring, the flaring didn't remove the merciless. That's all we care about. But uh, a disproportionate amount of times we've hit merciless, given that it's a one in four. <clears throat> Rather odd. Um, yes, when you look at the entirety of the craft, this is actually significantly cheaper, despite the fact that per craft, per craft, it is quite a bit more expensive. Oh, I forgot, I didn't miss this shit. Fucking, I had. Oh, thank you for the 14 divines, gentlemen. You shall fucking feed my belly for about four minutes. Okay. This guy wants a weekend. That's not it. And what does that guy want? Okay, 14 divines to the total. That puts us up at plus 14. We are now at 8,452 divines. Let's grab some more imprints. Also, I am going to rearrange the order of regals. So I like having the regal first. There we go. Whoa! Oh, T6. What's this guy? Who's this guy? What's going on here, bud? What's going on, bud? You didn't get the skill gem. Yes, you did. You want another one? What is this guy doing? I had two of them. I traded you one. Oh, enhance. Oh. Also, if you used the trade site properly, that wouldn't have happened. And if I wasn't captain of ship retard, wouldn't have happened. Sorry about that. <laughs> Although he did press accept, and they're not even the right color. <laughs> Too easy? Wait, did he not say that? 
He did say that. Um, all right, back at it. Last league, somebody did that to me and told me that they, um, that they had, uh, that I owed them a original sin and they were in the, they're in my guild. So I thought maybe like, I, I couldn't really remember, but I got flustered cause I was streaming. And so I just gave the guy an original sin. I was like, whatever, I'll look through my fucking chat logs later and, and figure it out. I didn't remember it. And then as soon as I gave it to him, he fucking G quit. Deleted the character and left the guild. Or quit, like, left the like, guild quit. Deleted the character and left. I was like, alright, man. Enjoy. <laughs> okay. What did it say? Perfectly optimized, perfectly optimized triangle of crafting right here. Boom, boom, boom. Fucking beautiful. All right. In this situation here, I'm pricing the awakened Ellie wrong. How did I price it wrong? What about that's priced wrong? Uh, in this situation here, guys, uh, again, because we annulled, right? We've got the two suffixes blocked, but we need a third suffix block. Now, you can't exalt because you you could hit a prefix. So instead of wiping it and then casting the meta mod, we, we use a four chaos aspect of the crab, which blocks the suffix just the same. Oh, no, I, my fucking fuck. I forgot to put a weapon on. God damn it. I don't have a weapon. Uh-oh. My main skill. That's fine. Blade work has to take care of us. Fuck you, my trigger fucking skill works better. Yeah, what up, bitch? That's a boss. <laughs> you need to min-max in this game. I don't care if you're discharge character. <laughs> Your trigger will work. Look at that. What do you know? Hey, I know. Look at me. Give me your copy of my ring. This ring here. Nope. Whoa. Whoa. What the fuck? This ring. I made a mirror copy of that. What's up, Luke? Yes, I, I rolled some imprints today as well. Uh, I, I bought 2,000 imprints. So the imprints are like 175 to a mirror. So I bought like... Uh, 13, 12 or 13 mirrors worth of imprints. <clears throat> yeah, there's eight divines. Plus eight. 8,460 divs. Let's go. Uh, where is the bow? Where is the bow? There it is. Okay, so now we get an aug. And it rip but you can see still force the prefix aspect of the crab working the same way as the uh multi mod does there easy game I say easy game when I fail. I fail like 13 annulls in a row. And I finally hit like the 1 in 3. It's like, yeah. Fuck it. All skill, bitch. God amongst men. Oop. The recency effect certainly takes hold in this game. Alright. Or recency bias, rather. <laughs> Oh, okay, it's tier three. Phew. I still get very much used to, like, because, you know, I've, I've played PoE for, since 2013. So sometimes I see values and I, like, I forget about, um, 
you know, stuff like uh, explicit modifiers and uh, have increased effect and that sort of shit. Ooh, nice. Good and all. Ooh, another 24 divs. Let's go. I would love it if people would learn how to use the trade site properly, but that's fine. Perfecto. No, no, it was Varga that RMT'd. Great tab name. Today? Yeah, I changed up the crafting today. Learn how to use the trade site. You see how he messaged me and it's not... You see how this one is highlighted? And this one is not? When you message like this properly, it shows the person, person who's selling it to you. Like it highlights it in the tab. When you use that, it does not... It's a minor difference because it still shows the column or whatever, but it's when you have multiple trades coming in at once, it's much easier to, especially if you have like multiple of the same item. Like, let's say you had a full tab worth of uh, here. I'll show you a good example. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Here, like this tab right here, a bunch of heralds. Or this tab here where I have a bunch of these. If somebody messages me like this, it'll highlight which one it is. When they do it like that, I have to like go through and do like a fucking grid search. <clears throat> okay, 24 divs added. Plus 24. Hybrid tier 6. Oh, it's only tier 5. What the fuck? I got so excited there. I totally thought that was a much higher tier fucking hybrid roll. I, I forget. Yesterday I rolled Emperors. A perfect emperor, Emperors, which is tier 2, so it was 74. Like 74 to 74. And I actually divined, when I rolled Merciless, I actually divined it to be 179. Um, So the, the, per, the roll's perfect. Ooh! No, the roll's perfect on that. Fuck you. Um... So when we hit the uh, the perfect emperors, it was three hundred and eleven increased three hundred eleven percent increased fizz damage. And looking at that, like seeing over three hundred percent is just it's like such a fucking not mind fuck, but it's just it's a uh, power creep is real. Nice. Ooh, more money. Hey, give me some money. I think we're actually making money faster than we're spending it with respect to raw divines right now, which is good. Oh, nice. Hit the fucking. For eight devs. That's it. 8,492. So we are... Oh, we just hit 19 mirrors. Oh, no, it's, what's that? 17 mirrors. 17 le mirror. Please don't hang out in my hideout. It is very annoying. Twenty chaos. What's the fuck? Wait, why is it twenty chaos? Fucking. Um, why is it fuck? Do I have? I even have a twenty chaos tab. Bitch, do you just? Yeah, you're getting ignored. Told, <laughs> told, hello. Somebody doesn't answer you in like five minutes and another message, but like fourteen seconds later, no. I shouldn't even have a 20 chaos tab though. Oh, you know what happened? I was I had a quad tab next to this. And I was uh, clearing out the quad tab so I could put crate chicks in it. So I just pushed it into the tab beside it. Which was empty, which was this one. 
There we go. Um, here it is. Rip. Can you leave, please? Your skills are... Oh, here, take your, uh, here, take the ten lines you could. You can put them in the guild staff still, so I don't have to take stuff out of my inventory, but I'll get your lines. Actually, you know what? You move too slowly. They're coming in here. There's an open tab here, open access guild trading. Ten divines in there for you. You are the slowest person I have ever met, but you are much appreciated nonetheless. <laughs> Thank you for grabbing the uh, annuls. That's not the kind of annul I was trying to buy off of you, but <laughs> forgive my accent. Pepe Le James. You got your. You got them? Yeah, perfect. Where's the cash tab? Uh, this method is both faster and cheaper. Uh, I would show you guys on Craft of Exile, but my computer crashed and I lost the string code and I don't want to enter the thing again. It takes too long. I... Do you guys like actually here? I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Do you guys want me to show you why this is better, like on Craft of Exile, and enter the whole fucking thing? Um. Like, I can show you why it's better, but it'll take me, like, 15 minutes to, like, fucking go through. Sorry, yeah, you can't say yes when I give two options. Yes. If I say, do you want me to do one or two, and you say yes, I don't know if you're saying yes, but one or two. No, no. Continue, good. All right. Actually, oh, sorry, you know what? I, oh, no, I can't, because I can't. You know what? Sorry. There's a private bow channel. Sorry, there, guys, there's a private bow channel on my Discord. When I open Discord, for some reason, Streamlabs crashes. But I can send you the screenshot here, because uh, I, I sent it to them with the odds on it. And I'll just upload this to Imager and the, from my phone, and then you guys can see Uh, what this doesn't count, so don't look, don't look at the currency numbers because it doesn't count the life force. It also doesn't count imprints, uh, but it works out to be a, about uh, 20 mirrors, which is about uh, a third of what it would be the other way. Okay, imager, share, copy link, YouTube chat. Okay. Le Belton. Pepe Le Belton. <laughs> Who's a dirty bird? Me. Oh, tier two. Fuck you, tier two, you stupid bitch. Fucking 23rd time I've hit tier two. 
Can I extend this all the way so I can read it? Or... This is so dumb on iPhones, uh, how you can't, when it's plugged in, you can't sit it, like, I can't fucking put my phone down and lean it against my screen, because the fucking charger port is on the bottom. Fuck. There. Put a coffee cup there, support it. <clears throat> That's why I can't, I can't see chat, so. There we go, now I can see chat. But I will still ignore chat, because I hate you. Oh, there goes the phone. Uh-oh. Don't I have two monitors? Nope. That's why I keep screen capture on. I'm analog as fuck. I don't know if you've ever seen my YouTube videos or if you guys are just tuning in to watch this, but... If you look at my YouTube videos, all of the cover art is made on Microsoft Paint. And all of the guides I've ever written are made on um, Notepad. <laughs> uh, although more recently I found out about Google Sheets or whatever it's called. Google, uh, or whatever. Uh, it's not called Google Sheets. Google Sheets is the uh, spreadsheet or Excel one. What's the... Uh... What the fuck? Why does it keep unpowering? Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Until my phone gets to 10%, it's been charging for a bit. How much are imprints? 2.6 divines each. Uh, individually, buying them in bulk, it's more. Google Docs, yeah, that's right. Hybrid tier 6. We've been getting, uh, like, I'm not just bitching about this, because, like, uh, whatever, but we've actually, like, st like this. Our nulls have been atrocious. Atrocious. Uh, probably wait. Now it'll, it'll level out over time, but uh, it's really bad right now. Oh, there we go. Look at that generation Z method. <laughs> Complaining you shall receive. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Gen Z, for the pro tip. Look at that. Then I insult Gen Z, and I fail. I'm sorry, Gen Z. All, all of my multicolored hair warlords. Tip six. Fuck you. There we go. Hey, finally, fuck. The amount of times we failed that in all in a row is crazy. Uh, this guy wants. Tab name. No, 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 no. It was Varga that RMT'd. Is... Plus seven divines. Eight thousand four hundred and ninety-nine. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Oh. Come on, man. Specifically that part of it where you, uh, like the pre. Come on. Okay, please leave my hideout. out. Thank you, bye. 
Get the head. I know that might sound weird, but it's just when I see auras and changes in color, it's really it's really distracting. Like when I look at this and I see stuff moving around. It just draws my eyes over to the things that's moving. Can you kick people from your hideout? Or can you reset the instance? Uh, <laughs> I actually prefer that he's standing there. Actually, I don't mind really if he's standing there. <laughs> I think he's trying to be a dick, but he inadvertently helped me. Because now he, I can't see his shit. So that's fine. There we go. <laughs> that worked. Sounds like someone struck a chord. What the fuck is going on with this? Like the amount of times that we've hit the, uh, the mod we want to on that. Proportionate to either having to recraft the uh, matter modern not pretty crazy. <laughs> okay, let's see how many times. There's two, in a, two in a row. There we go. One. So let's count how many it takes for the next one. Oh no! Oops. <laughs> Someone is a Lara carded me. We wasted one imprint, that's okay. Oh, I almost did it again. The one, I guess the one, the one problem of having a very quickly optimized process like this, like kind of like the same thing. If uh, if you guys have rolled, oh, nope. If you guys have rolled alterations in large quantities before, like trying to hit like something like plus one gems or uh, plus two arrow or just something that's a very low weighted mod, right? Just sitting there rolling alts over and over and over and over and over, you get kind of like, um, you know, like it just sort of becomes. The, the you know the motor habit or whatever you, you kind of your eyes are like watching but your brain is kind of zoned out and then you roll over it and that can be supremely frustrating when it's something that's like a one in i remember i did that I'll give you a good example uh the last time at the beginning of the league when i was crafting a similar bow uh a race we lost out on unfortunately um i uh i was rolling for merciless and uh Oh, nice. 
was rolling for Merciless, and um, I uh, I rolled over it the first time, and it had taken me like probably 30 minutes to hit it. Something like, oops, uh, something like, uh, I don't know, let's say 1500 alts or something. And I was like, fuck, fuck, I started getting all pissed. And then I like, you prepare for it. Like I sat back down, gathered myself. Um, you know, this was like a 20 second process. Fuck, do I not have my weapon on again? God damn it. <laughs> fuck a weapon, we're Blade Vortex now. Yeah. Who needs this charge? Who needs this charge? Um, and, uh, I sat down, like, preparing myself mentally to do it again. Like, you know, to have to spend 1,500 alts. And it, it, I so I started rolling them. And on the sixth alt, I hit Merciless again. But because it was so quick, I rolled over it again. So it was like, I'm like, <laughs> uh, I uh, wasn't a happy camper. And then uh, it, it, it took me, like, I think 2,200 to hit it again after that. So lesson learned. But, uh, yeah, it's funny. Come on, man. We're getting really, really bad RNG on these nulls. What the? Uh, I track things like... Because a crap like this is so... Like, if you're looking at the odds, guys, to uh, to hit tier 1, tier 1, tier 1, uh, it's in the range of, like, 100 and to 200 mirrors kind of thing. Um, with this method, it's a bit... It's uh, significantly lower, but um, fuck it, damn it! Did I keep a? Oh, I didn't. Ooh, all right. I gotta remember to do this. You have to keep like an oh shit imprint. Uh, I have to do that at least. You see there? There's the you're an idiot fail safe safety imprint. Uh, because like say something like that where you're use you're actually using the imprints to craft. It's quite easy to roll over them. Uh, and then you might lose your imprint. And then you have to roll Merciless again. And specifically for mine, I put, um... I put, uh... uh I divined it to be 179. Uh, in case we get lucky on the Regal. Or on, in this case, on the Augment, the first Augment. Oh, fuck, I don't have a weapon again. Oh, shit. This might be harder. Great chicks are no fucking joke. Oh, maybe they are a joke. Never mind. Eh, bitch. Yeah. That thing you saw at the end wasn't a discharge. It was the commandment of Tempest, by the way. Okay. Note. 179 Merc. Plus. Multi mod. Safety and crits. Get some cray chicks. <laughs> That's okay. I have 1200. Uh, I can answer many more. Like, when I'm doing this part where I'm making imprints, I can be a lot better with chat. I don't know why my, my phone keeps going dark. Uh, going back to the homepage. Hopefully it stays up now. How much do you... Uh, it depends what kind of mirror craft it is. Uh, you can see here I've got Frenzy Charge, Power Charge, Spell Damage for Power Charge Rings. Um... I've also got a mirror crafted discharge weapon, plus one support gems, explode, double damage, uh, the tree, 
whatever. This is actually the only one-hander in the game that has both support gems and explode. Uh, those are the two rarest uh, prefixes. Uh, that and two one crit multi. Uh, and then I also have a seven 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 ring, uh, first one ever made. Uh, with P one multi and the triple seven seven onslaught, seven seven power charge. Uh, I've got a uh, perfect rampage tree on the triple implicit, perfect rampage tree on the fizz fizz attack speed with double damage. The fire stacker, I, I hit that manually synthesizing it, but perfect rampage tree. Another backup bow with T1 fizz and triple implicit, 230 multi, um, mirror quivers, uh, the double charge shield. We got a uh, mirror quiver here. Yeah, some shit running around. But yeah, like a mirror ring, cheapest one I've ever crafted one for was like 120 divines. <laughs> I, I got really lucky. With, like it was very, like right at the beginning of the league. And I rolled a uh, plus one frenzy. I bought a plus one frenzy ring for 35 divines with three implicits, which is obviously hilarious uh, in of itself. And then um, after four vultures, I hit 7% dex. And then another 12 vultures, and I hit 8% life. Now, 8% life is not one that you typically want, especially later in the league, but, but because it was so early, because I spent at that point about 80 divines, uh, I was like, fuck, I'm not gonna, like, I'll just throw this up. Uh, mirror crafting a, a, a ring takes about, like, for the explicit, it takes about 20 minutes. It's fucking easy as shit. Um, and so I actually ended up hitting triple sick, like, using a T0 essence for the um, uh Attributes, I ended up hitting T1, T1, T0 um, after 2.4 divines worth of essences. Also very funny. Um, and it actually rolled... Uh, then I used 6 divines and it actually divined them perfectly, which is even funnier. Because the most expensive part of rolling a ring is divining the suffixes, especially if it's attributes. Because the T0 is a 1 in 8, and then the T1 in the, uh, is a 1 in 5, and the other three ones are 1 in 5. Which means to divine them perfectly actually takes 200 divines on average. Um... And so I hit that in six. So at that point, I had spent like mm, uh, 90 divines maybe. And then I did um, Wild Bristle Matron. So early in the league, you know, it was like fucking 0.7 divs. And, and then I did Augment Life. And on my first one, first one, I hit T1 Life, which is like a one in eight, I believe. Uh, so I got that on my first one. And then I did uh, Wild Bristle Matron again. And then I did my Ashling and I hit the Ashling, put on the Cold and Lightning damage. Um, threw on like three divines got 79 life and then uh minus seven so the ring was done for 120 divine that is the cheapest mirror item i've ever crafted why does this keep turning off what the fuck okay but that was just a sequence of events and circumstances that were like, Vivid Vultures, if you were unaware at the beginning of the league, for a large portion of them, they were, like, fucking 20 chaos, 30 chaos, 40 chaos. Like, it was absurd how cheap they were. This is the Millennial stream? Hell yeah, dude. Fuck Gen Z. Yo, you know it's a joke, actually? And this is not a joke. I mean, this fully, full, full sincerity... There are seven times as many people who watch my YouTube because I have analytics. Seven times as many people um, that are over 65 that have watched my videos over 10 years, a million views, um, as people that are teenagers. Seven times as many. 65. There are more senior citizens. Seven times as many senior citizens that watch my fucking POE videos as teenagers. So saying fuck Gen Z into a chat like this is not really... I don't think I'm... It's like... It's like a politician in the States being like, support our troops. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things that's like, it's... Got support on both sides of the aisle. <laughs> yeah. It's like your enemy combatants might not like that sentence, but it's fine because you're only talking to people who are on your side of the situation. Yeah. Like that. Pretty sure it's just underage kids. 
troops need, do need to be supported. Can confirm was troop. Um, just so you know, I'm not taking a shot at troops. <laughs> Some of you may think that was unnecessary to go for, but I, I actually rather care about that topic. So, in case anyone thought that was me taking a shot, it wasn't. Straight up crayon eater. My, uh, you're welcome, brother. Love the brothers down south too. I got a house. I got a place in Florida. I spend about uh, well, not anymore, but I need to spend about a quarter of the year there. Love the states. Um, my favorite part about returning to Poe though, because I was gone for three years uh, in the military, was when I came back. I made a Reddit post about uh, it was something about the Sentinel, I think, and someone commented on the thing, and he's like, "Oh, you fucking back, eh?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like. I remember when you got fucking, he's like, didn't you get run away from the community, uh, from fucking, cause you, you, you fell asleep during Havoc's race and missed the beginning. And I was like, nah, uh, nah, that's not what happened. And he goes, yeah, I remember you were too big of a pussy and you fucking ran away cause you were scared. And I was like, no, actually I was in the army. And he's like, yeah, whatever, man. Fucking still a pussy too scared. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. You're fully right. I, I was scared of the uh, down books that that the Reddit community gave me because I fell asleep during a fucking one week race and went to go become an infantry soldier. You, you got me pegged, buddy. <laughs> he was like, he wouldn't back down on the topic. He was like, nah, you're still a pussy. I was like, all right, man. So That was like the last time I uh, talked about that on Reddit at least. <laughs> You can't watch all of YouTube because you're underage. Ah, oh, I see, I see, I see. I know this part's not that interesting to watch, guys, so uh, it's a good time to ask me questions if you have any. I can see people leaving by the flock, but there's nothing really to do about this, so. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, uh, I can't bypass this anyway, right? Imprints aren't tradable, so nobody else can do them. Uh, and obviously they're an essential part of this, and naturally, even though I have, like, 1,200 of them, uh, I do a stash tab at a time, right? So you can see I have tracking purposes here, just to see, like, if we switch up technique or whatever. So you can see right there, look, each stash tab worth of imprints, um, I actually had seven augments there, which is more than I had in the previous three stash tabs. So you, these these augments are the, uh, that's the second augment. So you have two tier ones. Uh, that's what that's tracking there. So uh, this is inevitably the most important thing to measure uh, in terms of you know probability. Obviously, um, on on an independent basis, previous results don't impact future ones, but um, just gives you an idea of roughly you know where you kind of sit in terms of. Uh, perhaps expect it, expectation or whatever or average total cost kind of thing um 
And so, yeah, the, the last dash tab worth of imprints we did netted us. Uh, the average prior was we did six over three tabs, so we're averaging two per tab. So we're getting three and a half times as many augments per tab by doing it this way. Now, obviously, it's more expensive because we're, you know, we're fucking, uh, you know, paying for all the multi mods and that, blah, blah, blah. But um, it is uh, obviously at three and a half times. It's uh, definitely not. Uh, plus, you also have we had we were quite unlucky with that last little bit we did there with the nulls. Uh And the thing with the uh, that other the other method too that you're doing is that a lot of the time you're going to be hitting either uh, you know flaring or dictators or emperors uh, or you know even conquerors if you're stopping there for tier three. Uh, you're going to get that a lot of the time on the reforge fizz right because the regal itself obviously uh, has no uh, specific tag to it. You're just regaling into a, a mod pool of. Uh, it's 50,000 the overall mod pool with the fizz removed. It's uh, like a 43,000 mod pool Flaring is 200 out of 43,000. So that's a uh, one in 260 if my math is right and uh, Dictators is 225 so it's eight times rarer than that. So it's one in 2,000 and something right so the regal is very unlikely to be the one It does happen, but it's quite I actually did that regal into a flaring earlier, but it's quite unlikely that that happens, right? So um, generally speaking, you're going to be reforging into one of them. Um, and so, uh, because of that, almost always it's going to have three prefixes and that means you have to annul, right? And if you're annulling there, you only have a 33% chance to annul, um, the mod you want. Uh, which means most of the time, even when you do get that rare fucking flaring or you do get that rare dictators or emperors, you end up losing it. <laughs> so... That can be uh, very frustrating, obviously, and it also takes a really long time because uh, while this method is, um, you know, the, the cost per craft is obviously higher, uh, you get a much, much more, you're far more likely to hit them as well in terms of time invested. Um, that, that method is very imprint heavy, right? Because you're doing Regal Reforge, Regal Reforge, Imprint, Regal Reforge, Imprint. And the thing that actually adds the most time is this process right here, right, of doing the imprints like actually running the imprint save. Um, and since our method, um, a lot of the time, you're able to uh, recover it. Uh, and if you do end up hitting flaring, now I can sorry, I should say, because we don't have prefixes can't be changed, it's possible that you, uh, and this actually happened earlier, where we hit flaring and it removed the merciless. Uh, so it's a bummer when that happens, but um, for the most part though, 75% uh, of the time when you hit either the, um, uh, the hybrid or the, uh, flat fizz roll, uh, you're going to be ready to go to, right into the second augment. Now, to give you some perspective here, uh, we have done, we've hit flaring 16 times. Now, six of those have been today. Yesterday, we hit it 10 times in a row, and 10 times, 10 times out of 10, uh, we failed the annul. So I can't tell you like that, how frustrating that is when you roll, like, I think we did 420 imprints worth. You hit flaring 20, 10, or sorry, 10 times, which is right on average, 1 in 40 kind of thing, uh, with the reforge. And uh, it's the same thing right here, 1 in 40. It's the reforge, same thing, 1 in 40. But when you get those 1 in 40s then being removed 10 times in a row, now the odds of, uh, the odds of losing a 1 in 3 10 times in a row are actually like, it's like 1.6% or something. So like the, the luck we had in that respect was just, like on the borderline obscene on the bad end, but um, nonetheless, it did happen, right? So th this method, while it is, um, you know, it might, it seemingly is more uh, cash heavy. Again, working out the actual, I've done the math on it and I've run the simulations. I actually ran the simulator a million times to confirm uh, and it's significantly cheaper uh, as well as much, much faster. Um, and not only because you don't have to, you know, a null and fucking exalt and blah 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 and get rid of all these random crappy mods but when you do hit it it's it's very cut and dry as the food in the infantry uh i actually had to get when i was on the m203 range shooting a grenade launcher uh, uh i had been out in the field so long that i had developed a gallstone um and it, your gall bladder kind of looks like a whoopee cushion and the top of it's kind of like this, right? Where it exits off into your, I think it's not your esophagus, but it exits out into somewhere. And the gallstone I got from eating uh, field rations um, was so big that it had it had blocked the uh, like the exit or the entrance into the gallbladder. 
and um because the rations that we get like it's it's the food has like the it's like fucking sometimes it's like 20 years old but it's like non-perishable right um and it's got like a lot of msg and preservatives and shit like that i'm not trying to villainize msg because i know a lot of those things have been disproven but it has a lot of like preservatives and that crap and i don't know if this was the only reason but being on the field for so long i ate so many of those i developed the gallstone and then i guess the uh reverb or the the uh, recoil or whatever from the grenades was enough to cause it to rupture and my gallbladder exploded when i was in the middle of the field um and uh so i i <laughs> i had to get rushed out of the field and uh, i had to get my stomach my stomach cut open and my gallbladder removed and then the civilian doctor who did it because i was out middle of nowhere and there was no fucking military doctor uh he accidentally slipped and cut open my liver and so they had to go back in and then sew that shut and then i also was uh doing a field exercise out in like uh the north so like in the winter and uh the snow was like three feet deep and i was leading my section through uh the woods and we're going down a hill like this right and when the snow is that deep and it's obviously in the middle of the woods it's it's fresh powder right so you can't see anything and going down a hill like this it just looks like it's a flat a flat terrain below uh but it was actually a river at the bottom of the hill uh it was a very more like a creek actually but it was you know like eight feet wide uh but because the snow had covered it and it was just slightly frozen so that it was like frozen enough that the snow could sit on top without falling down so i walked down the hill i had a rucksack on with 80 pounds on it and i had a c6 so like a, a machine like a belt fed gun and i fell through the river and uh with all that shit on and luckily people were with me and get me out um and I had to get spinal surgery after that. Uh, and uh, and then walking behind tanks, tanks leave ruts in the ground that are pretty deep. And then when it's like springtime, like tall grass can cover those. Um, and I fell through a tank rut, like just kind of like, because you have so much weight on you, right? Plus your actual weight. And like, you know, I, th I think I was averaging like when we were doing training sessions uh, like at battle school, especially. Uh, like fucking 25 kilometers a day of walking and so your joints and uh, everything are already in pretty rough shape and then you put the weapon like your weapon and all, all your kit uh kevlar and all that shit very heavy plus the rucksack um so when i stepped into a tank rut uh i had my meniscus tear and so then i had to get knee surgery as well and after those three surgeries they medically released me <laughs> they're like yeah you're no you're no good to us anymore and then covid hit and they rushed my release uh, but they did that by saying hey we can give you your benefits uh, but there's gonna be a lot of red tape because um, you know COVID's hitting and they're they're you know they thought that a lot of people were gonna fucking VR voluntarily release because of COVID they're like so we know we know you're too injured to fucking whatever or we're not even gonna let you they're like however uh, if you want to get your proper benefits uh, because everything's all backed up with COVID uh, you're going to have to uh, stay probably for the next two years while we figure that out. Um, or, and they're like, also, you're going to be on non-duty. So you just have to sit around at a base, basically, and just wait to leave. Uh, they're like, or we can let you voluntarily release right now, and we can let you go immediately, and you'll be given full fucking, you know, full pet or not full pension, but full, um, a full honorable discharge, whatever, voluntary discharge. And so I basically got strong-armed into... Cause I'm not going to fucking sit around on a bit like military pay is not great, especially, uh, uh, you know, doing infantry. So, uh, I wasn't willing to risk two, two years of my life for, for medical benefits. So then, um, I've had to pay for like my physio and stuff. And, um, some of that's been kind of shitty. Also people like, uh, people make fun of my hand all the time. Like they're like, I can't watch you fucking move your mouse around. It makes me nauseous. Like I don't, I have nerve damage in my hand. So, uh, sometimes I can't feel it when it's shaking and uh, some other stuff like that. So with the military experience, sorry to answer your question. It was, uh, it was, it was great in, in some ways and it was awful in other ones. I've had a pretty diverse work history. Um, I joined because my grandfather was dying and, uh, he was, uh, he was a politician and, uh, uh he'd done a lot for, uh, for the country. I um, won't elaborate on that just cause there's sinister people watching always, uh, with respect like TFT and people who've actively tried to. Uh, use things in my life against me. Uh, so, um, anyways, he was someone I respected a lot. And when he was dying, his wife had died a couple of years prior, and uh, he just—you could tell he was, you know, he was about to pass. He was on his last legs, sort of lost like the motivation. 
Uh, my one of my uncles had to like move into his house, kind of take care of him. And anyway, it's like I saw him. I got I got leave for Christmas. Oh no, it wasn't before that. It was before that. Um, before the year, the year before I joined the military, uh, it was Christmas, and I hadn't seen him in a while. Uh, my family lives all across the place. My parents are down in Florida. And my siblings are in the UK, and uh, I think he was out in Ottawa at the time or whatever. But um, I, I could just kind of tell it was maybe the last time I was gonna see him. Uh, so the whole family sort of like listening to him and stuff and uh, it seemed like he was he was just sort of reflecting on his life and how happy he was with like about the kid. he had a bunch of kids they all had grandkids and uh, he was just saying he's like it's like I, I just wish someone in the family would have you know gone into the serve or whatever so at that point I had just broken up with the kids this is when I was streaming in POE uh, in the past uh, like around the Legacy League era and uh you know, I'd worked, uh, I worked as a marketing director of a fitness company for a while, and I worked at a, a fund, hedge fund for a bit, and uh, uh, I just broke up with a girlfriend, and I was kind of having a hard time dealing with that, and I sort of threw myself into POE as a way to deal with that, and, uh, you know, work wasn't really fulfilling, so when I heard that, I thought it was kind of like, first of all, a good way to, like, honor his memory, and um, Something that, you know, he, he and I had never really been close and, you know, I thought that if I did that before he passed, it, it would have been like a, a cool thing for us to share. And nobody in my family had, had done that, so. Um, as I went in and uh, it would say, on top of that too, it was like a good way, like I'd been with that girl I, I was with, I thought I was gonna marry her. We were together for five and a half years. Uh, and she met me when I, like, when I was in my early twenties, I worked as like a, uh, we, we, uh, promoter, I guess we would call it, or ran a team of promoters, and I would go on tour with like electronic artists like Avicii and Dead Mouse and Afrojack and all these guys, and we'd book shows and go on tours across Canada, whatever. And there's, I developed a pretty bad drug problem from it. Um, and uh, at one point, I wasn't fully homeless, but like I, I was basically homeless at one point. And I'd met this girl when I was like at the lowest point in my life, uh, and uh, having been someone of somewhat affluence and social fucking. Uh, you know, when you're in that world, people are, are very utilitarian, but they treat you like a god. They're like, you know, they're drunk when they see them most of the time, or are on drugs, and you know, you can provide for them socially in that moment. So everyone always treats you fucking like you're, you're everything, because you know you can provide them something when they need it. Um, and so like going from the the, the two positions juxtaposed, switching back and forth were really tough. Um, and so having someone like her who like was like gorgeous 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 girl who like didn't care about any of that like she knew i had the drug problem she known who i was before like i used to have uh to say i was promiscuous would be a bit of an understatement uh like i don't, I don't know what youtube's algorithm or fucking safety things are like but got some stories let's put it that way um anyway she didn't care about any of that shit and so uh, when her and I broke up, it was like a, it, it put me through like a, an existential loop. So joining the military was also on top of the stuff with my grandfather, a way for me to kind of, um, I was like, I'll get away from, be put into something that is so like physically and mentally occupying by virtue of, you know, potential danger or whatever that I just won't think about it. Uh, so yeah, that, that's why I went in and then, um, yeah, and I uh, met some great people there, some awesome people. Um, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was different. You know, I, I come from a big city, too, uh, like city of six million people. And uh, you take for granted sometimes, uh, I guess, like worldviews. And, you know, you see certain people represented on the news, right? Or like people who think differently than you and you just sort of assume they're stupid. Uh, or that you know I feel like everyone always looks at the world through the lens of their own experiences that's very hard to escape but um, you know you have certain perceptions or stereotypes of different groups I, I guess and then you get to meet the people and um, not just know what they think but know why and how they've come to think that way and even if you don't agree with them uh, you have like a brotherhood that supersedes all of that and it's like I could fucking hate you on a level that like intellectually but at the same time I'll fucking pull you off a battlefield kind of thing. Um, like to have that, uh, it, it was like the complete opposite of what I had struggled with when I had that drug problem where it was like all utility, right? Like all anyone wanted was what I could provide them, but there was no substance to it, right? It wasn't like, uh, I couldn't trust that person. Like if I was fucking overdosing on the ground at the time, uh, I would I would venture 95% of those people would probably run out of the place because they were worried about the cops. They wouldn't like whatever, right? 
Um, that's uh, that never actually happened to me. I'm just giving you an example of things that are not uncommon in that world. Uh, by 30, I had been to five times as many funerals as I had weddings. I'll put it that way. Um, but um, yeah, that was that was a really cool uh, aspect of it, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I remember being like 19 years old, like organizing music festivals and things like that, making like $3,500 a week to go to clubs and fucking get bottles of booze and fuck girls and be like the man. Like I was making like fuck, a lot of money when I was that age and then going to the military and I, I, uh, I did go to university actually in college, but I think part of me was like, <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you've ever, any of you guys have been into, but it's like. I always sort of resented when people were like, yeah, I'm a fucking vet. And they find out they're like a fucking supply tech, like they're giving it, like handing out uniforms. And you're like, all right, like, I just felt like I would feel, not gross, but like, I didn't want to, I didn't want that to be me. And like, I think in, in your in my mind, it's, I'm six foot three and I'm in good shape. Like I played rugby in South Africa when I was younger and uh, I got recruited to a boarding school to play football. Uh, I was a yeah, big football guy and, and whatever. And so, um, in my mind, I've always thought of myself as like this tough dude, right? And I was like, I'm not gonna be the fucking office junkie. So I, I enlisted as non-commissioned in infantry, uh, and uh, you know, talked to them about doing some maybe uh, uh, some. They wanted me to do military intelligence, um, but uh, anyways, yeah. So I went into that, and it was one of the things I struggled with at first was having officers who would sit there and yell at you about how you're going to work at fucking Burger King. Um, if you didn't, if you weren't there and like, this is all, not done during basic, during basic, I mean, during, during basic training, you know, it's, it's like, they're trying to break you. It's like, you, you have that one in there, but like when you would get like a fucking, you know, when you're in battle school or when you're at the battalion or whatever after, and, and, and you just get these guys that are dicks that you can tell were like bullied in high school and fucking, you know, they, they outrank you, so you have to listen to them, but they're sitting there screaming in your face about how terrible your life would be. And, you know, I'd come to find out that, like, these guys went to, like, fucking little shitty-ass, like, community colleges that you need, like, a 35 to fucking percentage average to go to. And, like, biting my lip and being like, listen, bitch, I went to, a, I was like, I'm fucking eight inches taller than you, 60 pounds heavier than you, I went to a better school than you, my girl's better looking than yours, and my job paid 20 times what yours does prior to coming here, so fucking suck my dick. Like, holding my tongue then at first, and that's all ego, it, it is what it is, but when somebody's, like, in your face yelling at you, calling you a piece of fucking filth, and telling you you're gonna work at Burger King, uh, just simply because they can, that's, uh, that was hard for me to deal with at first, but it humbles you for sure. Uh, but then you realize it's not about, it's not about that, and everything, I mean, there's some people who abuse it, but I mean, being, uh, being ordered to do things that, uh, you think are stupid or from whatever there's all purpose to it in the grander scheme of things so pros and cons but it definitely made me more patient and more understanding uh if you want to see stuff like my life because i, I grew up and like i'm 30 how old am i 31 32 32 now uh my instagram is linked i think in the video the description below you can look at that and my the last 10 years of my life basically are all documented there it's, it's quite the uh, the spread. There's some photos of me like at Buckingham Palace uh, having dinner with like the royal family. There's some fucking photos of me in the army. Some photos of uh, me uh, at like fucking homecoming as like the captain. I was like my fucking uh, prom king in fucking high school. But I was 300 pounds before that too. I lost 135, 140 pounds. The door model at Abercrombie when I graduated. I was like that douchebag from every 90s movie. Uh, and some of you, yeah. anyways, you can see like the fucking the ups and downs of that life there, uh, if you're interested in that stuff, but, uh, for better or for worse, when I was like in the final years of high school was like when Facebook came out. And so I don't know, I'm sure actually a lot of you based on the demographics I see can relate to this time period, but like when social media came out, there was no, like people didn't like think about like internet safety or data or anything. It was like, if you went out with like a night on with friends, it was like some girl would take like 600 photos and it wouldn't be like this, like one curated, like Instagram photo with all this photo editing. It was, it, it would be like a photo of like a chick throwing up in an alley and it would be captioned like, LOL. And like, you'd see people like making like, some of would just post like literally like 600 photos. You know what I mean? And so like everyone's lives were like fully fucking, they're just out there. Now most people like in their thirties or their late twenties or they meet someone they delete social media, whatever. 
But like, I never did because I always thought it was kind of funny. Uh, so like my Facebook, like I, I've got like probably uh, because of like the club promoting the events I did, like I hit the Facebook friend cap early. Like when I was like 20 years old, I had like 5,000 Facebook friends. Uh, and so I got tagged in photos all the time and they're still there. So I, I could literally see like a fucking photo journal of my life, which for me now, uh, you know, is, is interesting to look at in hindsight uh, and, and just sort of reflect on some things when you kind of, kind of feel it down or not in the best mental state. But um, I mean, I've, I've talked about this before, but like I've been to rehab a couple of times and, um, you know, I, I've, I've uh, you know, I've helped friends as the, the life led their eyes and found people hanging and people ripped it, rip apart and bleeding to death and some other shit too that maybe led to led to some of that drug use or, or whatever it is but um you know everyone has their has their uh, their shit and uh doe is very important to me because um if i've never said this before through all that stuff i did through that time poe is like the one constant for me like when i was going through a hard time with drugs and um you know, I, I wanted to stay home on weekends because I didn't think I was at a place where, like, if I went out, like, I was like, I know I'm either going to drink or dr do drugs. Uh, and, like, because I've been, like, that dude for a while, like, I'm getting fucking phone calls constantly. Like, sometimes it's, like, a squad of, like, four fucking 10 out of 10 blonde chicks being like, James, I come over to our place. And it's, like, it's really hard, especially, uh, uh, you know, when you're maybe a little bit insecure about the drugs and, and things like that. And a lot of your close friends have kind of turned their back on you, like, when you get that like validation, it's hard to say no to something like that. Um, and so I started when I started playing PoE. I like I liked it so much that it was like the one thing that I could I could do and focus on, and that would hold my attention well enough that like I didn't I didn't sit there like having like so much social anxiety that like I, I caved into that. And so in, in a lot of ways, um, that that decision itself may have saved my life. A lot of the people I was with there are dead. I've actually been playing PoE before. Uh, like uh, t two leagues ago when I got a phone call that two of the people that I had the two people had called me on a Friday night to go down to her, or this uh, I'm not gonna say her name but this girl called me down to go down to her place and I got a call while I was playing PoE on the Saturday that her and the guy that I was supposed to go down and meet uh both had died the night before uh from overdosing and I'd been playing PoE so I didn't try and pick up the call so in a lot of ways that that um I, I PoE's been m more than a game to me and then when my girl broke up with me, like, he always sort of was, uh, you know, come here and you don't, the externalities of life don't matter as much. Nah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's what, that's, that's why I, where that, not the passion, but, you know, people, people think I'm angry or fucking just a dick all the time. And, you know, I, I get angry when people are not angry or frustrated when people, uh, you know, People are like, well, if you're fucking cheating, like, why else would you call out fucking Janubu? And it's like, because I actually care, you know what I mean? Like, I, I legitimately just, I care about this game in a way that is dumb to some people because, um, you know, they don't, they don't have the same predicating, uh, elements that have led me to believe the way, or feel the way I do about it. And I understand that. It's weird. It's weird how much I care about this game. But at the same time, to this point in my life, I've played PoE for 10 and a half years. Uh, it's the longest relationship I have in my life with anything outside of my family. Longest girlfriend I've ever had was five and a half years. Longest job I've ever had was probably three or four years. You know what I mean? Or a job or career or whatever. So, yeah, I love the game, man. But, it is what it is. Um... My chat hasn't updated in a while, but I got a whole inventory ready, guys. Sorry if anyone was asking questions there. It's kind of hard for me to uh, talk about stuff like that and read and answer things at the same time. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'll. Well, I'm gonna go have a cigarette uh, just because I lined all of that up. Um, and I'll read. I'll read chat when I'm uh, when I'm out having a smoke and just if there's anything that was really pertinent there. Or I think um, you know if anyone was trying to relate or share a similar experience and I didn't acknowledge it, uh, it was just because I didn't see it. So. I'll, uh, I'll reach out quickly while I'm outside. We got it all lined up now, um, and we'll we'll get to it. Okay, so just give me about five minutes here. Uh, just let me take a breather because that's a it's a bit for me to talk about all that in quick succession like that. Um, and then uh, and we'll get back to it. All right, see you guys in a second. <clears throat>
Okay, fellow nerds, let's do it. <laughs> Gamer mode engaged. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh. All right, Beck says, yeah, I'll grab that when I need it. Thanks, buddy. Uh, oh, no, it's not there. You're starting to get the stash, pal. Okay. Let me get my phone plugged in so I can see chat. Um, just as a reminder to you guys, uh, right, especially for those of you who are um, uh, part of the bow, um, uh, my family's back uh, in the city, so I am going to see them tomorrow and most likely Sunday as well. So tonight I will fucking put everything I got in this until I physically can't anymore, and then uh, it'll, it'll probably be a short uh, day, or, day or two break if anyone who's involved wants to uh i mean hopefully we hit it tonight but if not um i'm not uh, i'm not running away or anything just uh be gone for a couple days sorry guys i just got, I got to answer something here real quick on the phone Oh, what's this guy getting? I just invited this dude and he declined it. <laughs> Come on. Get chat up here. You too. Alrighty. Let's fucking get her. Okay. Sorry about the uh, little little pause there, boys. Um. All right. Uh, where are we at here? What tab is this? Bio One Divine Tab Lab. Excited to see the prefixes? Hell yeah, dude, me too. Um, aside from the, uh, I'm gonna add divine. Um, so on this one here, we I've got eight thousand five hundred. Oh, that's exactly eight thousand five hundred. Eight thousand five hundred divines in on this. So that's exactly actually let's say eighteen mirrors roughly. Seventeen, eighteen mirrors, and then at the beginning of the league, put in twenty one mirrors during the bow race initially, uh, which we ended up losing unfortunately, but. Was racing to make that first mirror bow back then and put 21 mirrors into it so to this point i've spent 39 mirrors trying to craft the bow this league so uh suffice it to say i am excited as well and I, you know but i also uh i'm also uh realistic about you know um i know what it takes to get to to that point um where we're trying to get to so try and stay realistic about it but um, I'm also not going to quit because it's generally in my nature to begin with, but also after 39 mirrors, you can bet your ass I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not taking that one into the red. 
Alright, five more divines. That's five. Okay, 8,505. Why does chat keep leaving? Oh, it's because my phone's plugged in. Um. Hmm. Maybe if I turn it sideways, we'll stay on. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to figure out how to keep chat up. My phone plugged in. It's, uh, keeps closing. Like, when I leave it, it goes into, like, black mode. All right, back to it, boys. Oh, I gotta make a new section here so fifth tab of imprints so we're trying we're tracking the uh the results by imprint here fuck chat oh oh tier three damn i still get excited about that shit as if i'm not i'm not used to the fucking you the 15 percent explicit physical and chaos damage and then tempering where i'm some sort of used to but Definitely not the crucible value. So every time I see a value, and it's like what it would normally be when it, yeah, especially like flaring. Every time I see a fucking flat fizz, and it's, it's in a range that would typically be flaring, even though it's like tier three. I'm like, god damn it! Gotta, gotta train, retrain my brain. Oh, what do we get there? Five. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, for those of you who are just oh. Those of you who are just joining in here, uh, we're using a new method. Uh, ran these simulators on this, and it is um, it's overall cheaper, but uh, and especially from a viewer side, it is a from what I've been told and for myself personally, being a fan first, not of myself, but of you know POE and crafting in general. Um, usually, when something's a lot more fun to craft, it's a lot more fun to watch. Uh, this is certainly more, far more, uh, not necessarily high stakes, but. Um, as opposed to the method we were doing previously, um, it's a lot more rapid fire, so the results come quicker. Uh, and so, uh, the last time we, uh, the last imprint, so we're, we're doing them by stash tabs of imprints, so you can see we got a full stash here. The last full stash we did using this method, we were able to get seven augments, and by that I mean uh, we hit the Merciless, which we have here, as well as Flaring and another, um, another tier one, either, uh, Either fizz, uh, flat, or hybrid. Ooh, nice. Uh, fizz, flat, or hybrid. And uh, so it'll take us probably maybe one to two hours at, at most to go through all of the 144 imprints. Uh, so in the next hour or two, we should be receiving seven seven attempts at a finished bow. So uh, the the to hit, if we're augmenting the second augment, if we're augmenting for hybrid, which is usually going to be the case, it's far more likely that we hit um, flaring on the first one. And it is for us to hit either emperors or dictators. Uh, if we're augmenting for hybrid, it is a 1 in 60 to get either tier 1 or tier 2. Uh, but a 1 in 25 to get either tier 1, 2, or 3. Um, and uh, it is um, 1 in 40 if we're augmenting for uh, for flat fizz. Um the reason why those numbers are relevant, as I mentioned, we're getting seven augments per in or per stash tab, and uh, so far, what's your that? Thus far, we have done um, 13, 13 augments in total. So it's not it's not like a deck of cards where, um, you know, every time you you pull one failed attempt away, it's not like it. Uh, it makes it so that each uh, subsequent attempt is of, of higher uh, probability, but it does make it so. You know, if you're to look at that data set as a as a whole, not just as a indiv like an individual sequence, it gives you some rough idea of when you might be getting kind of in that average range. So, uh, if we get another seven attempts here, like we did last time, that would put us up to twenty, right? Uh, and so there's a, a pretty good chance, one, about a, a one in three chance that we hit either tier one or tier three. Uh, if you're, again, not exactly how it works, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Um, and uh, about, uh, what, an 80% chance that we would hit tier three. Or sorry, 33% uh, chance that we hit tier one or tier two. And uh, yeah, anyways, I think you guys get what I'm saying. Point is, if you're able, you know, if anyone's sticking around for the next little while, uh, the crafting here is quite rapid, as you can probably see. Um, 
I've uh, loaded up on uh, 1,250 imprints. Uh, I got five. 5.4 million, 5.4 million Vivid Life Force. Um, 300 Sacred Life Force, and uh, about a mirror worth of Divines Raw. So, we are good to go for quite a while without having to load up on anything uh, too important. There, there might be some little things like I'm going to have to buy some aspects or... Um, you know, like fucking annulls or something like that, but just a, a trade or two. So in the next two hours or so, I would say, um, would be a good estimate as to, uh, like, we'll probably be able to go, yeah, one and a half, oops. One and a half to two hours before we need to do another uh, round of imprints. Um, and hopefully I can stay awake that long. I'll, uh, I'll keep going here until, uh, until I... Uh, you know, I physically can't. <laughs> been, uh, I've been going for, I think, 12 or 13 hours already, so that won't be able to last forever. But since I have to go away for the next couple of days, I'll... I'll put in a uh, appropriate level of effort, commiserate with that. Um, just as an FYI as well, my phone is charging right now. For some reason, it goes into... Um, like, I, it won't let me keep YouTube up. When I do, it goes, like, the screen turns black, I think, because it's plugged in. Um, when I... doesn't seem to be an issue when it's unplugged, so... For another five minutes or so, I'll let my phone charge, because it was up 1% when I was outside. Um, and, uh... Then I'll be able to uh, see chat, just in case anyone's asking me any questions or anything right now. I won't be able to see them for a few minutes. But that probably works to everyone's net benefit because I have very, 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 very severe ADHD and uh, I can't focus on more than one thing at once, like ever. So if I start answering chat's questions, I will stop crafting the bow almost assuredly. <laughs> so I'm sure most of you guys just want me to... Uh, oh! Uh, tier 4, fuck! We've already... By the way, we hit tier 1, tier 1, tier 4 twice already. So the same, uh, the one that, uh, like the same tiers that Sushi has, uh, with the bow that got serviced a bunch of times. We actually hit that earlier in the league as well, but um, uh, I actually hit it to tier one, tier one, tier four. So we we regaled into, um, or sorry, we uh, we hit that first augment with flaring, and then we uh, augmented the second time, and we hit tier four twice. It was actually in a ten minute period. In ten minutes, I hit tier four, tier <laughs> tier one, tier one, tier four. So, uh, it was our third time in the league hitting that. I actually did hit that earlier on in the league as well. On um, the sixth day of the league, in fact. Uh, but at that point, uh, nobody had crafted like a mirror tier Fizbo yet. And so, the reason why I didn't stop there at the time was... Um, obviously, someone's going to make a better bow, right? And uh, it wasn't a question of anyone doing mirror services for free at that point. So... It didn't seem worthwhile to stop at tier one, tier one, tier four, because, uh, you know, probably within a week, somebody's going to make one better and then your bow becomes obsolete. And at that point, as I mentioned, 21 mirrors deep on it. Um, you, if you know, you're not going to recoup any of that cost, uh, you can't really justify. Um, and, uh, the difference between, um, doing something like crowdfunded or community funded, uh, versus a mirror fee, unless you're you know, like someone like uh, Janubu, who's, <clears throat> you know, sole aim is to profit as much as possible at all times. For myself, I actually legitimately enjoy crafting, which I think is evidenced by the 84 mirror crafts I've made over the time, or the course I've played, about 10 of which have been profitable. Um, for example, like, I spent 11 and a half mirrors crafting a discharge claw that I know not a single person's, well, one person mirrored it, but I'm never going to make the money back on that, right? Um... But the reason why you need to have mirror fees is because of how exorbitantly expensive this is. As I mentioned, this one we're already at uh, 8,505 divines. Um, and so the mirror fee is to help recruit that cost. If you want to craft, like if I wanted to make another craft after that, um, I need to get money somehow, right? You can't just constantly spend 25 mirrors on something and have no source of revenue. Uh, and if you're doing like crowdfunding, it's um, it's just like it, you're you're basically your mirror free it's either it's, it's on the front end or the back end more or less right um 
So when you get it on the front end, if you get people to pay for the craft ahead of time, you don't need to charge a mirror fee because uh, you don't have to come up with the cash. But if you uh, do it on the back end, that's what the purpose of fees are. Now, I'm personally of the belief, um, you know, particular as a case study looking at basically any experiment of this in real life with respect to economic systems, um, that if you take away incentives over time, uh, neither, neither system is really uh, able to uh, exist in a continuum. Um, the problem with what um, uh, TFT does is, is fairly obvious, I think, by most people's measure, why that's a bad thing. Kind of like a completely deregulated market, right? Like we have antitrust laws and monopolies against monopolies for a reason. Uh, infinitely spreading wealth gap and being able to manipulate markets and price fix and all these things are, uh, you know, we have regulations. I mean, most places have regulations against them for a reason. Uh, and then why the long-term consequences, oh no, a few, two, three, of what Sushi's doing, uh, I don't think they're sustainable. Not that they're bad in the, in the short term, but why they're not sustainable is because um, the incentive structure leaves after a while, right? Uh, when you get what what equivocates to a mirror fee up front, right? When you crowdsource something, um, it's perhaps incentivizing for the people that are going to mirror that item, right? Because they don't have to pay a mirror fee on top of it. Um, and, you know, as much as I hate the guy, as he correctly pointed out, um, if, uh, if people are, you know, have a perceived value add by mirroring something for free, the natural recourse is going to be the price of mirrors goes up to a point that uh, the mirror fee plus a mirror was in a lot of cases probably cheaper. For example, um, you know, the, the bow that got made, uh, the guy who individually made a bow, the first mirror bow of the league, which was tier one, tier one, tier three. Um, the mirror fee on that plus a mirror was only 350 divines. So the people who are paying 500 divines for a mirror right now are actually paying more for an inferior bow. Um, so there, there's that problem. But um, there's also the problem of uh, incentive structures in perpetuity, right? So, you know, it's fairly easy for uh, someone to raise enough interest and enough capital required to make something like a bow, right? Because a lot of people want to do that. Bows are the most mirrored items in the league, uh, every league in the game by like they're about 85% of the entire mirror market. Right? So there's going to be a lot of interest there, right? But when you start getting to abstract crafts, um, people aren't going to fund that, right? Like if somebody's like, okay, I'm going to make a fucking discharge weapon and there's like 11 people in the whole league playing discharge, uh, guess what's going to happen? Like you're not going to be able to crowdfund it. And so that system falls. And then uh, even if it doesn't, you then have to look at the incentive structures on the crafter side. Uh, if you had infinite currency, which... For argument's sake, let's say the situation that's happened recently, the bow that was being crafted was provided with infinite currency. Um, you don't have an incentive structure on the crafter's side to go through with it because the difference between tier four and tier one is actually 15 times, 1500% the cost to make tier one, tier one, tier one, as it is tier one, tier one, tier four. Now, assuming cost isn't um, a calculation there in terms of uh, deterrence, right? Like if you, if you can infinitely pay for it, um, if, if someone can make a bow that's tier one, tier one, tier four, and everyone's going to mirror it anyways, uh, you know, why not just stop there, right? Like, you can then switch on to a new product. Everyone comes in, you know, they mirror the bow, and they feel like it's great, and, you know, you're getting the viewership and the, the good PR, so to speak, and all that stuff. Um, because the realities of having to craft a superior product are kind of painstaking, you know. Like, um, as I mentioned, the imprints, there's no way to get around doing that process. Right, you can't have somebody else do it because you can't trade imprints. Uh, and if the, another per if you trade another person bow for them to do the imprints, then you can't stream what you're doing. And if you can't stream what you're doing, then people aren't going to pay for it because then it's not crowdfunding and there's no it's obscured. Right, the whole point is the public view. So, ooh, here too, damn it. Um, so there's a there's a problem on the incentive side there as well, where you actually get a worse product because. Um, you know, the, uh, there's no incentive really to make a, a, a perfect one, which I mean, it, and again, this is not shitting on anyone involved, but I, you know, by virtue of the name of the, the, the shop, right? Like something like Settler Shop, it, it's in the name, right? They're settling. <laughs> um, and for a lot of people, they don't understand perhaps the, 
that you know in effect what they're contributing to is really they're not actually saving anything because they could have got one again that was objectively better tier better uh, for less money um, prior to that happening um, and as well uh, the problem with that furthermore is that the people who give and a lot of people seem to forget this TFT doesn't actually craft anything TFT is like a marketplace right they, they take other crafters items right and they provide a service where they're online 24 7 and you know they have a, a reputation for being trustworthy with other people's mirror items right you can trust that they're you know uh that they're gonna get those serviced and take the fee or whatever and then they have obviously like a ubiquitous presence within the game so they can market it in a way that on an individual basis no person can however it's kind of they don't they're not actually producing anything right and so the people that are actually getting impacted largely um by being in the middle like in the middle ground between both parties they are the uh, crafters like the individual bodies that produce or like tft refers to them as mirror shop partners right um and now the only reason that these people make a diversity of different mirror items every time is because they have either a financial incentive or a breakpoint like even if they're not going to make profit, at least there's the possibility for those people to recoup cost vis-a-vis -vis mirror fees. And so if if you are one of those middle ground people where you know TFT is going to take a cut of your item, and you also know that there's an item that could be potentially made for free by somebody else, it completely removes the incentive structure for you to uh, to actually take that, that extra leap, right? And so you put yourself in a position where you're either reliant on one party, which acts similar in the real world to like a totalitarian government um or you have one on the other side where it's more of like a, a marxist term of like type of communism um and i'm not equivocating them but just in terms of the impact uh like not saying that fucking sushi is a, is a communist but um in, in effect you know you're giving the state or a singular party all of the currency to su and you know you're indicating that you have faith that that will be used at the discretion of a singular party or a singular individual who has already covered is not necessarily motivated to make the best product with it um and just trusting that they will uh you know act in good faith and uh their outcomes will be aligned with what your perceived motives are right like i'm giving this x amount xyz so that xyz outcome will happen and that's not always going to be the case as well you have to understand the novelty of that will not last forever right um at a certain point like you know i'm sure for the next little while he'll, they'll be able to craft things for hours every day and make a diversity of items and people are going to be super stoked and just flooding them with currency and blah 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 and also you know we're at a significant portion like we're quite deep into the league right now right so there's a lot of people who have quit uh where you know the value they're putting on currency isn't as high Right, so they don't mind giving currency to something because that currency has no perceived value on their end. However, um, again, once the novelty wears off and it becomes an expectation and not something that is like this new paradigm shift within the high-end crafting scene, um, it will become, uh, you know, like so the viewer numbers potentially go down or whatever it is. People stop, you know, providing it with a gratitude and they start just sort of expecting you to to do it for them, right? Um, and I think, again, on a motivation side, um, if there's no financial incentive IRL for the people that are doing it right now with streaming and stuff, um, and as well, people start to be not, maybe not abusive, but they don't show like a level of gratitude, which I, I can assure you people, uh, when they start to expect things in this game, they, uh, uh, they can be very, very, very indignant, uh, for example, the other day, somebody asked me to mirror my ring that I spent 14 mirrors crafting. And I put the mirror fee so low that the, the, the ring has been mirrored 29 times. One of the most one of the most mirrored items in the league that wasn't a free one. Um, and I still haven't recouped my cost on it. And he went on a probably a 30 message rant about how uh, I was an RMTing Brokey and how Sushi was changing the game and how he was going to go mirror Sushi's ring for free. And like, like I just, I, I honestly, I said, okay, man, that's cool. He said, I'm going to go sushi mirror, mirror sushi's ring instead. I was like, all right, man, sounds good. Have a good one. Literally, like, I swear to God, verbatim how I replied. And um, he, he went on 
a tirade harassing me for like probably 15 messages. And uh, I then go look at the ring that Sushi had and it was 7, 7 and 12% or 14% crit multi. And what that person didn't know is that I actually had that exact same ring and I gave it to my guildmates for free. Like I was just like, this base isn't worth crafting on, but uh, I don't want to craft rings anymore. You guys can sell this and do whatever. Um, as well, that uh, crit multi in particular with synthesis is one of the most harshly um, diminishing return uh, in terms of probabilities of any of any mod that there is. Uh, like to get tier four was probably about a one in 70. And uh, keep in mind, I have a database of 22,000 uh, vultures on rings. So I, I acute, acutely know this more than any person in the game probably. Um, tier four is like a one in 75 tier three, about 150, uh, tier two, about one in 400 to one in 500 and tier one is about a one in 2,500. So not only was the ring not seven, 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 but the ring wasn't even tier one within multi. And if it, even if it were the price difference between tier four and tier one is about 27 times. You can make like 27 of those rings for the same cost as a tier one, tier one, uh, tier one. So, um, what that person was inadvertently kind of demonstrating in that moment was a that the expectation of something um and obviously very clearly uh you know prior to prior to that offering happening like a week earlier most people are like oh fuck man i'm stoked like thanks for fucking letting me get this like cheap i, I never raised the fee on the ring i didn't make it commiserate with mirrors like 100 divines right now is a fifth of a mirror uh, and again the ring cost me 14 mirrors to make uh, so uh, it, it's it's more than reasonable but the perceived value of something um, in the way that the person could not distinguish between that ring and the other one, as well as the fact that, um, you know, in, in their mind, it had already been established that mirror fees were, uh, you know, they were unfair and that they were exploitative and that anyone who was doing one was, um, you know, a part of like a TFT type conglomerate, which he also insinuated, by the way. Um, that I was a part of TFT and that our us RMTing scumbags were going down, um, which if you're familiar with my position with TFT, you would find uh, nothing short of hilarious. Um, so there's issues with that as well. But um, my point being outside of like that dynamic between that group, uh, if you're an individual crafter, like I have a platform to kind of talk about these things in so far as like I, I can do stuff and people know that there's no legitimately to that. No, you, you go ahead, dude. I, I don't need any more come out at the moment, at least. Um, uh, what was I seeing? Uh, oh, yeah, I have a platform to talk about these things, at least. And like when somebody says something like that to me, you know, it's on stream and uh, I can like share the screenshot on Discord and people like laugh and they're like, oh, this is a little ridiculous. Right. And uh, so for me, it's not necessarily disincentivizing because I'm like, oh, that guy's a fucking idiot. However, if you're like a regular dude just sitting there trying to craft away and you spent like two weeks and like 14 mirrors crafting something and somebody sits there and harasses you and calls you like, you know, the scum of the earth, like that's going to push people away from that. Uh, as well as, you know, as I mentioned, when you have no incentive to necessarily make something um, but at the uh, the high end because, you know, people are going to uh, mirror it or perceive it as a, as a similar product, um, it, it completely... Uh, it, it lowers the uh, the bar of what is what is acceptable for people to, to do. So, um, I think it, in lo in the long term, I think it ends up harming everyone. And the last part of it too is that um, I, I kind of touched on this a little earlier. I was saying at this point in the league, people don't care so much about their currency, right? I was like, but the vast majority of mirror items are like quote unquote races, right? Like you want to make something quickly at the beginning of the league because of material cost and because of. Um, uh, mirror crafting is typically a zero sum game right like if you make a certain mirror item and it's best in slot and it's like perfectly crafted and you get like the six tier ones which is typically in the past always been a requirement for um for mirror items is, is, is to have that right and uh um people aren't going to have that superfluous currency at the beginning of a league, right? And so existing in a vacuum, like right now, where we're, you know, 85 days in the league, a large portion of people have perhaps quit. Uh, and a lot of people have extra currency because they've achieved all their goals within their builds. And so getting something like a mirror, a mirror piece of gear is affordable for a large swath of people. Now, not only are people not going to have the superfluous currency to provide earlier on in the league when this is most relevant, um, but there's also not going to be pretty much anyone that's going to be able to afford a mirror. Now, again, 
the people that oh, the people that um, actually produce these items, uh, a large portion of them are not going to be able to have this foresight, and they're going to react in the way that they've been treated in the past. And if if they have the perception that mirror items are abs and at, you know expected to be provided for free and are operating at an absolute loss, those same people are not going to necessarily enter that market. Uh, the people that will will be people like um, PFT and to be fair myself as well because I understand the consequences of these things as well as how that market shifts and um, the absolute necessity to really do that early on. But I think a large portion of people will be disincentivized from doing so in a way that it centralizes ownership of those items further to people like me or to people like TFT. Or um, And if there's just not really capacity for group funding at that phase. So um, that also ends up with a less diversity of items as a result, uh, I anticipate, early on. And furthermore, uh, it'll be much harder for people to actually recoup those costs. Um, because again, the communal expectations have now reestablished and shifted. I ordered food a little while ago. It's here. One sec. You're gonna be kidding me. Guy called twice and he's not fucking here. Sorry guys, another fucking guy, you can't read a fucking map, or a GPS with a pinned location. There you go, okay, there we go, go <clears throat> Last night I had to chase around a delivery guy for, I'm not joking, for over an hour. Um, I was sharing the fucking messages with chat as it was happening. It was, it was quite the, uh, <laughs> it was quite the test of patience. Um... Been quite a while since we've hit the uh, mod well over 40 augments. Again, this is a 1 in 40 here. Um, I think we've gone through at least. Uh, but, um,
300, okay. So 300 would put you around, uh, uh, on equity, 300 would give you around 50, 276, you're around 4% or so. Oh shit, they stack in 10. Sorry, one second. I don't have enough space. I keep forgetting that uh, since they made the uh, chaos change, used to keep in less space. Uh, Skullmaker. Thank you, sir. Enter your data in there, pal. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, Skullmaker, Divine's 300. Percentage of the group. Control C. Control V. D. Yeah, three point out three percent right now. Just your message, cool, bud. You're uh, you're marked down though. All right, so that would be another total of three hundred. So that's the. Contribution to C sixteen. There we go. C sixteen. Percent. There you go. All right, all updated. Good. Oh, my food. I just got a club sandwich uh, for after stream. The restaurant was closing, yeah, soon, so I don't need to eat it right away. We'll open it up though so it doesn't get soggy. Um, my phone should be charged enough now that I can see chat. Sorry, guys, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Um, For some reason, uh, it won't let me keep chat open. The mirror fee is going to be half of whatever TFTs is. Um, and it's possible that if I get tier one, tier one, tier one, I might just, uh, I might make enough, I might charge enough on mirror fees. Um, I might charge enough on mirror fees to pay out the people that invested. Like pay them out so if everyone let's say the group funding right now was so that i, I have 3857 on my end and then the rest of the group is 4948 if i hit tier one tier one i might pay these guys like do enough mirror fees that i can pay them all out um a percentage on their return like let's say i don't know if they put in 300 give them 500 or 600 or something and then just make the bow free for everyone forever so tft can't rmt anymore <laughs> because bows are 85 percent of mirrors if i make a perfect one uh, and I can give it away for free, then TFG loses their capacity to, like it would literally cut into their money making by 85%. Uh, and that to me would be a far better benefit than getting fucking random ass mirror fees. Um, but I'd have to talk to the group that, that I'd 100% I'd rather do that, but uh, again, there's other people involved, so it would have to be a majority vote. So I would charge fees up until the point that I could pay them back or pay them a ret uh, you know a return on equity and then go from there. All right. Uh, knowing that most of you just want to watch crafting. Uh, oh, my phone fucking. Why won't it fucking stop going? 
Does anyone know why that happens? Like, why why is my phone not able to just stay open? Oh, it's because I didn't press play. Wait, if I press play, does it go? Maybe it's because play wasn't pressed. Oops, that's the wrong copy pasta. There we go. Screen lock time. No, it's it seems to be fine now. I think it was because I uh, I had YouTube paused because I wanted I didn't want it to waste battery. But I guess when the video is paused, it assumes that you're not actively there. Like the chat doesn't like chat itself doesn't keep the screen unlocked. It seems to be fine now that uh, it's playing. Yeah, word to your moms. Ooh, I need some more regals. Does anyone have regals they can sell me? Oh, I don't need exalts. I need unnulls. Unnull beads. Unnull beads. I, yo, it would be hilarious instead of un, um, annulment shards, they were called annulment beads. I would fucking love that. Uh. <laughs> yo, who's got the annul beads for me? Like watching like a German streamer or something. Fucking annul bead. <laughs> Just. <laughs> it's like someone with a thick accent. Who's got the annul beads? <laughs> If I die, I clear my search history, boys. If I die, I clear my search history. Oh! Fuck you, you fucking scumbag piece of shit tier 2. Fucking fourth time I've hit tier 2 in this little this little session here. Um, yeah, but we're, we're falling on the bad side of probability here. RNG. I mean, R RNG exists in a vacuum, right? But over time, uh, obviously, probability outweighs all. Uh, you know, uh, same reason why a casino is never gambling only entering a casino is gambling house always wins as a matter of mathematical certainty because there are net favorable net pot like net favorable outcomes for them which uh, again in a vacuum or in a single instance might not always be the case but over time uh, always is so for ourselves despite the fact we have done well over 40 augments now without hitting a tier one Our time will come. But this is, uh, this tends to be the harder part, not the harder part of crafting, but um, psychologically, which a lot of people I don't really think put enough weight into. Um, <clears throat> there's there's a lot of like, uh, you know, it's, it's hard not, I want to get emotional, but like you get, you get invested in what you're making, right? And expectation is, uh, is a son of a bitch, right? Like you hear something the one in 50, there's like an almost innate like expectation that if you spend 50 you're gonna get it right and i think for a lot of people even when it's something that's not very expensive that can be very frustrating right if they fall on the bad side of variance um and when obviously that just gets compounded to the nth degree when you're talking about something like this where it's uh, it's not dozens of divines it's dozens of mirrors and um <clears throat> uh, i think a lot of people when they undertake come on you gotta be fucking kidding me you stupid son of a bitch Tempered. You'll see something tempered real quick. You keep giving me that tier two, you son of a bitch. Um, I think for a lot of people, uh, especially when they undertake mirror crafting and from a more casual perspective where uh, they haven't uh, had that experience, that's uh, that's the most difficult part to deal with, right? The frustration that can come along with uh, with variants when you're talking about such, uh, such large numbers and naturally... Uh, Especially for the average person who, um, you know, they might get a really good base and decide they want to craft it themselves, right? And then they come to the realization that, as I mentioned, something like tier four uh, is one fifteenth the cost. Or tier one, tier one, tier four. You can make fifteen of those bows for the same cost as one tier one, tier one, tier one, right? And so you get like a perfect base. You get all stat jazzed because everyone's telling you how sick it is. Like, I'm going to mirror craft this, and then you don't realize that you're going to have to fucking roll. Low. If you want to go for tier 1, tier 1, tier 1, guess what? You're going to have to fucking annul a tier 1, tier 1, tier 2. Probably twice. And you're you're going to have to annul a tier 1, tier 1, tier 3. Uh, fucking four times. Five times. Uh, tier 1, tier 1, tier 4, you're going to have to annul 15 times. And for a lot of people, that's just not, <laughs> like, psychologically, 
uh, after having put in so much time and so much effort and so much expectation. That's just not something they can they can bring themselves to do. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're talking about bases, it's really, uh, if you have a perfect base uh, on, a, on a desired item, those don't come around all the time. And uh, in a lot of in a lot of cases, a lot, people will roll bases that are more expensive than the craft, right? They'll get a perfect base either through luck or a lucky vulture, or you know they get to get a drop, or maybe a friend gives them whatever the reason is. Um, and then they put a craft on there that they they deem to be, um, you know, worthwhile or it's close enough or whatever it is, and then, um, you know, people don't start mirroring it, uh. And then they get confused as to why and not recognizing that like the base is really in a situation like that the base is like the only thing that people want because if the base is if the base is perfect the expectation is the craft will be perfect uh and people have pointed this out um you know the two percent or the three percent fizz that's missing from our implicit uh, it, while it's actually obviously that is not um absolutely perfect but that does make it so that we can stop at tier two for example um, and not have any regrets about that. Now, in terms of actual function, uh, here's a little tip rooney for anyone that has probably been trolling at some point, because every time I craft this bow, people come in and they're like, fucking settling for fucking tier 2 fizz. Uh, the TFT bow has 2% fizz missing on their merciless roll. So there's 2%. TFT has a 13% crafted attack speed. Uh, but if you do the unveiled attack speed, it's 2% attack speed. Now, a perfect bow has 365% increased damage on it, or increased physical damage. So the proportionate marginal increase of a 3% fizz uh, is less, it's roughly 0.6% of the overall fizz damage increase, whereas 2% um, attack speed is 2 out of 43 to 45. So it's 43 total or 45. So it's almost 5%. So the marginal difference between TFT choosing to have crafted attack speed versus the difference of 3% fizz on ours um, not only could it be 66% covered, the 2% that they have missing from their um, uh, from their uh, Merciless roll, uh, so now it's only one missing Fizz, but then it could also be surpassed uh, nine times over simply by having attack speed. Um, not to mention the 2.2% base crit, which is literally, because they don't have crit on their bow at all, which is literally covered, is superior to elevated Hunters. Now, <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not using that shit on TFT's bow because it's like, I'm in no position to crap on a bow when what I'm doing is sitting here with a base. Um, and, uh, um, you know, being able to separate the artist from the art, uh, they have a great, an awesome bow, and, like, they're very lucky to have hit it as quickly as they did. Um, but, you know, RNG works like that sometimes. Uh, obviously, this is, that is the best thing in the game you could possibly get that level of RNG with, but um, I've had lucky days, I've had unlucky days. Uh, my point more so is to point to the... Um, you know the perceived uh, value of certain things um but the re you know the decision to stop like to not roll that 22 to 25 i obviously easily could have afforded it right like i have 19 mirrors in on this um however it's like if you look at it objectively and you say okay it's gonna cost me roughly especially because of the surge last week i was buying vultures actually three four days ago i was buying vultures for uh two to 2.2 .2 divines now they're four and a half because of all the people that are fucking you know when you have a bunch of streamers crafting stuff for free that constantly need vultures naturally the market on those is going to react and so you know i'm going to have to spend probably two to four mirrors to change three percent fizz damage and it's like well i can spend two to three two to four mirrors to get three percent fizz damage which is actually more expensive than it costs to make the bow <laughs> like the uh, um, again and i'm not shitting on sushi but he has a perfect base uh the base would cost more to make than the craft on the boat. Uh, not sorry, the prefix is in the boat. The, it costs an additional about two to three mirrors to make a plus two arrow on average, uh, depending on the cost of life force. But um, as well as matrons, but uh, or not matrons, uh, metamods. But um, yeah, that that's that's why the fizz is missing there, and uh, as well why I think a lot of people get kind of uh, thrown for a whirlwind when they. Uh, Sort of step into the arena like this without um, really knowing what they're in for. So, as I mentioned, I think the initial point I was trying to make there before I went down a fucking rabbit hole of tangents was that uh, we have gotten very unlucky so far. 
Um, I've used one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's 84 plus 10, 94. Uh, minus 84 minus 17 is 77. So we, at this point, we should have hit, we should have augmented nearly uh, two, roughly two, the tier ones. But um, uh, again, you know, having uh, been around this arena quite a few times, um, I know the, uh, I know the game well, so I don't get too emotional about it. But that tends to be one of the uh, the bigger indicators of whether or not you can expect to see something made by someone or not. Uh, obviously, past a certain point, like understanding, you know, different methodologies with respect to crafting um, is a pretty, it's a, like a pretty fixed cost in terms of, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, there's not too, like, e even if something is very complex, once you understand it once, you're good to go. Past that point, it's a matter of two things, which are currency and uh, willingness or motivation or time. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, like, the, putting in the time to do it. And, uh, that uh, is an often uh, overlooked element of it, I think. It doesn't get uh, given its fair shake. And to the credit of the gods at TFT that uh, that do occasionally do their crafting. Now, they get their currency from auspicious sources. Um, yeah, I won't elaborate on that further, but aside from the fact that, the, let, let's say the currency is a zero, you know, like, it, it, but you could actually equivocate it similar to the sushi situation where um, you know, the, the two things that separate them really are, are just the willingness they would have to, to spend the time to do it. Um, and, uh, I've got to, I admire the fact that they, they always do, right? They get their unlimited currency, not by, uh, the means that most people would consider to be fair, but, uh, at the same time, they at least, uh, you know, once they do get that, they, they follow through and, uh, that's, that's one thing I do admire about uh, those guys is, not not Jinu Wu, he doesn't do any of it, but uh Rage Dice and Panda. They are uh, they're committed guys and uh, you can't help but respect that in someone who shares a similar passion to you even if they're on the other side. In the same way that like, you know, if you watch like a UFC fight, right? You watch at the end of the fight people who fucking hate each other. One guy ends up winning and they end up you know, they end up hugging and like there's like that that moment of mutual respect between warriors. Not suggesting crafters are warriors, but um, as an analogy, where you know, even if you, uh, even if you fucking hate someone, you can, you can, you can see bits of yourself in them, even if it's on the opposite side of the coin, and know what it takes to, to achieve that same thing that you're trying to achieve, even if they beat you. And, uh, if you don't like them, at least respect the fact that they put in that effort. Because you know somebody who hadn't wouldn't be able to beat you. Thanks, buddy. For what it's worth, I mean, I, as I mentioned, I want you guys to know this, and this is why I said this before I started. Uh, my family is back in town, um, and so I'm going to be gone over the weekend. Uh, I, I still assume there's going to be some people who think, if we don't end up crapping the bow tonight, uh, is what I'm saying, and I, I seemingly disappear for two days, it's not because I'm giving up and I need to, like, fucking recoup. It's because my family who don't live in the country are home. <laughs> so just, just as an FYI, but that, that's why I wanted to lead off with that as well. Uh, because I think that it's easy to uh, uh, obfuscate those two. Is this guy just straight up paying me a half divine more? Do you want change? Do you not speak English? Okay, I guess he doesn't speak English. Although, if, that, if anyone here, actually, I guess everyone who's watching me would speak English, but if on the off chance somebody doesn't speak English well, and you want change, but you don't know how to like ask for it or you don't want to ask for it, link the person to the divine. You know what I mean? Like go like this, put it in your thing, and then be like, if you message somebody and it says 10.5D and you list them that, and then it shows 11, I'll know exactly what that means. But if you just show up and like put in 11 divines and then don't press accept, 
Kind of like, how is the person selling you shit supposed to know? Okay. Uh, 10.5. I'm not gonna put 10.5, but I'm gonna love it. Yeah, no, no, again, uh, uh, Jean Zhang, um, I agree with you. I actually said that at the time, uh, and, and I don't fault him for that at all. Um, but when, when I saw they had that base, I was like, that's kind of a shame because I knew that they weren't going to craft T1T1. Um, and who, who could fault somebody who has 1,500 person audience or whatever? Like, if, if he had to sit there, like, if you, the way the method he was crafting it with, you would have to use at least 5,000 Krejcik Chimeras, uh, sometimes upwards of 20,000. The amount of time it would take to roll 20,000 imprints would be, let's say it takes 30 minutes to do an inventory. So times a hundred, 3,000, 3,000. You're talking about uh, 50 hours, 50 hours of rolling imprints, roughly five, zero hours. Do you think 1500 people are going to watch someone roll imprints for 50 hours? Right? Like people get bored, you know, the first day, the second day, they might get excited, whatever it is. Um, and that that's part. Oh, Okay. Fucking finally. Um. Yeah, yeah. It's just like that's a hard position for a streamer to be in, and uh, it, that's not me. I, I I say that out of complete understanding and respect. Uh, he's prioritizing, you know, his brand and and, and his his community and the growth of the stream which i mean from any objective perspective is the more responsible thing to do but at the same time um uh as you said it's a bit of a shame because of the perfect base but uh i don't think any rational person could fault them for that but at the same time it was relatively predictable that that was the going to be the outcome tier three not ideal but it's certainly worth augmenting uh, there is no tier 3 bow that has Rampage. The tier 3 bow, they had uh, double damage on. The reason everyone... Actually, it's kind of funny. They, uh, TFT changed them, I think. But originally, because I was the first person who went public with the bow, people try to hide where they're at with the bow craft at the beginning when it's competitive, right? Because um, they don't want the other teams that are crafting them. It's always teams crafting them, uh, for the most part. Um, actually, I can't say always, and then for the most part. Those are uh, mutually exclusive terms, but... One of the guys, the guy who made the tier one, tier one, tier three was actually a single party. So he would be the exception to the rule. But generally speaking, it's usually teams that do it. And so people don't want to, those teams don't want to show the other teams that are competing to make the best FISBO uh, at what stage they are. Um, I started streaming mine. So um, this is, I actually have another bow you can see here. This is the one I was rolling earlier on in the league. Uh, and this one had double damage, right? So um, if you look at the first bows that were all crafted, the first mirror bows, they, were, they all had double damage. Right, because they were following, they were like, okay, well, if this is the benchmark he set, we need to pass that benchmark. And then people decided they wanted Rampage, which I still don't particularly understand because you can just get it from weapon swapping. Um, and I mean, if TFT, for example, wants to make the argument that Rampage is better, and it's like, okay, well, you put, or sorry, Rampage is better than 16% double damage. All right, well, Rampage has no actual PDPS benefit or de damage benefit. It's purely quality of life, and you can actually get it from a weapon swap. But you're willing to get rid of 16% for Rampage, which has no tangible benefit, realistically. Yet, you're willing to get rid of uh, local attack speed and 2.2% base crit on the bow for 14% double damage. Mm, someone's a hypocrite. Because um, they obviously, they put the plus 2 arrow and then unveiled double damage. And then, all of a sudden, the narrative shifts and double damage is the ideal unveil. No, 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 no. We're smarter than that. We know you're just being lazy and cheap. Um, anyways, uh, sorry, the point I was making there before I went down my ever, ever, uh, ever too frequent chirp of TFT, um, is that, uh, this is T3, obviously not ideal. However, because we have Rampage on this, the, the first one that the guy made was with double damage like that one. Uh, so it would actually be different. Plus TFT has that bow now. So if I did hit it and whatever, and the team, I would ask the people who invested, but if those guys were like, yeah, just stop here. Uh, all I would do, guys, I would put it up, put the suffixes on, put it half the price of TFTs, and I, I have a backup bow right here, another backup bow right here, another backup bow here, another backup bow here. 
As I said, I'm kind of a sick fuck. I don't give up on shit. So I made sure I've got backups. Perfect tree, perfect tree, perfect tree, perfect tree. T1 fizz. Fucking fizz attack speed to that. So don't worry. <laughs> we got this. Let's see where it goes. Let's update the counter here quickly. We hit some conquerors. Yeah, well, actually, what's funny about the sushi thing with TFT is that I actually gave sushi four of my mirror items, and I told him he could put them on the shop because I support the idea of, of helping the community. Uh, and then uh, Janubu messaged him and told him to take them down, and then he took them off. Um, also, as I mentioned, TFT's worst bow, like their worst bow they have up for mirror service is tier three. And I don't have any evidence of this, but I was just kind of speculating, speaking out loud. Sushi's, sushi stopped at tier four, which is no direct competition to T TFT's, right? because their worst bow is tier three. And so because the shop is called Settlers, he also explicitly put into the, the title of it, like in that little preamble, that we're providing mirror items, but worse ones than TFT. And I'm wondering if there's any mandate for that, right? Like it, it specifically says that they're gonna be worse than TFTs. I'm not saying he was strong armed into it or he's being cut in or anything or anything like that, but. I, th I found that interesting as well because <clears throat> the mirror items I gave him, he, he he actually took them, he accepted them, he put them on his shop. I did it off stream because I didn't want my stream to think I was like cloud chasing. So I actually did it without telling anyone. And then uh, he took them off and I actually found out from someone else because I guess he took them off on stream. Um, and somebody else told me he did, but he never told me that he was removing them. Um, so I, I don't know what it was for. Uh, and. I was told it was because he was asked, but that could have just been somebody trying to stir up conflict. So don't don't to put too much to weight in that. But uh, I, I being a partner like it, and being a partner with them doesn't necessarily mean that he's like fucking armed. I'm not suggesting that at all. But TFT has such a large platform, as Chinubu uh, accurately pointed out. Although I think a lot of them are bots as well. I think a lot of them are people that don't actually engage in the community uh, or speak English. So it's not the same thing. But uh tft is almost larger than the poe reddit right so if you can be a partnered streamer with them and be at least in good standing that's a lot of eyes to get onto your content right so um you know it's a stronghold they have on the people that are um and so i could again i could never fault someone for you know potentially feeling like that that kind of exposure uh could be taken away if they didn't uh, no, I'm not suggesting he's a dog on a leash at all. I, I feel like I just aren't like, I, again, I have no problem with Sushi at all. I actually think he's a pretty nice dude, and I think he's a relatively talented crafter. Um, I, I just, you have to think, right? Like, for myself, I have no motivations outside of, I don't know, I, outside of this. Like, I've been banned from fucking the Reddit. I've been banned from Twitch. Uh, both times it was because of TFT, uh, spamming porn in my chat and then reporting me uh, while I was having Christmas dinner with my family. And then um, a bunch of bots all of a sudden mass reported me for malicious software, which is ridiculous because I don't even have a second monitor and I use fucking notepad. I don't even know how to fucking malicious software. <laughs> My computer can't even fucking maintain stream labs without crashing. Let's be real. Um, so um, that being said, though, it's not like they're ever going to partner me or anything. So I, I don't really care if I bother them. But any rational person who is required, like who's living off of stream as a... Um, you know, like the streaming dollars, and the YouTube dollars, and uh, you want to have access to TFT, right? Like bulk buying and things like that. They're all convenient. Um, I'm not trying to paint myself as a martyr, but at the same time, he has external external considerations that I don't. And from any person's perspective that is just a, a normal human being, uh, they would decide on the part of the, like, who get like, imagine you're just a casual player who plays like an hour a weekend, and it's like, okay, you can have your livelihood, or you can be a fucking martyr for crafting in a video game that people tend to play. Like it's it, no sane person is going to take the, you know what I mean? Even if the people who are heavily invested in the game can understand it's like, um, yeah, no. So I'm not saying that to be disparaging of them in any way, but I think that there's probably some things there that are, uh, um, you know, uh, factors that I can't uh, fathom or I can't possibly know because I'm not in his position. All right, so failed the augment again. Uh, augment conquerors. Second time, and we hit. What do we hit? Mana leech. Today we've hit leech three times, which is a one and. Uh, in this case, it's actually a one and eight. That's fucked.
Flat phase is a 7,000 waiting. Mana Leech is a 1,000 waiting. So we hit a 1 in 8 right there. And then the previous two times, look at this. Previous two times, Fizz Leech, Fizz Leech. We've augmented Leech three times in a row. Fizz Leech is a... Uh, okay, let's, let's take a look here. All right, so that's a 1,000 out of 4,775. 4,775. So it's 20.9%. So let's just say 21. So 0.21 times 0 0.21 and then we just had a 1 in 8 so 12.5 percent so times 0 0.125 there is one half of a percent chance of that happening uh oh actually you know what's interesting um to hit, uh, this is approximately the same likelihood of happening, guys, as augmenting tier 1 hybrid. Funnily enough, look at this. Tier 1 hybrid, dictators. 25 waiting. Net waiting of 3775 plus uh, 1 leech, 4775, right? So 25 divided by 4775 equals half a percent. Look at that difference. Holy shit, that's almost identical. The likelihood of us hitting the three leeches in a row is almost the exact same probability. So, as I said, RNG comes and goes, sometimes on the good end, sometimes on the bad end. But what, what just happened for us there, despite not being where our motives lie, um, is an occurrence that uh, is of equal, uh, equal probability. So... As that just happened, so too could the fucking tier one hybrid, right? Spin it in the positive. Spin shit out of gold, baby. Rumple Stiltskin. Let's go. Uh, annuls after augment. We hit the augment there. Augments total. Total augments there. One. Okay. I just made sure that's updated properly. Okay. Let's see if we hit the annul. Nope. We should throw an exalt at it just because of the tier. Actually, I shouldn't. Okay. Yeah. Now we'll exalt. Obviously, this is like a one in fucking five thousand. You gotta be kidding me! Oh my god, can you imagine? I hit fucking flaring right there on an exalt after I hit fire. Oh, your boy would have been mad. <laughs> Yo, mad beef. I I would have I would have immediately changed tones. I like gambler's fallacy, baby. When things are going right, it's because I have a system, and I am fucking gonna live forever. And when things are going wrong, the game is broken and unfair, and GGG needs to fix things immediately. Case in point, everyone who who fucking does a divination gambled and quits the league. <laughs> I think it's the worst thing they ever put in the fucking game. The worst. Because it, it hurts people on both ends. Uh, when people are successful with it, right, it takes away the, like, appropriate uh, struggle to get rewards, right? And it makes everything else seem kind of meaningless. But, like, when you can, when you set your mind to, like, achieving a mage blood, or something like that, right? And it's like you find a card like randomly in a map and you go and you gamble it twice and now you've got a mage blood. It's like, oh, hmm. Okay. And then you go and then you're expected to go just back into a map and sit there grinding out the next gear you want. Uh, or like, say you want to mirror an item. You think that person's going to be incentivized to actually go out there and fucking grind out like 500 divines? No, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, last time I got a mage blood, like, I'll go fucking do that. So they get like a house of mirrors card, they go fucking try to get the, get the mage blood. And then they lose all their money, then they're like, ah, oh, whatever, this game's boring, I'm going to quit. And there's not like an appropriate level of, of friction against the progression. And then the other the other side of it is people who are like, I'm getting kind of bored, probably with character progression. I'm just going to put all of my money into a divination gamble. And if it goes well, I'll play this build. And if it doesn't, I'll quit the league. And really what that actually means is that I don't want to put in the effort to get there, but I'm giving myself like a mental out. So that if I lose everything, it's not because I'm culpable for this poor decision that is a net loss every time, extrapolated over a large enough sample because of the cost of life force and the fact that you can have zero, right, as an outcome, like you can have no change. The EV on a div card gamble is always negative. But when you tell yourself, okay, this is like, this is like a mental out where I'm like, this isn't me just being lazy or, you know, not willing to put in the effort or fucking figuring out where my deficiencies actually lie. This is me just doing a YOLO for the memes. And then they're like, you know, they're like, yeah, nobody's going to judge me for fucking being a quitter. It's like, I, I had balls, man. It's not the reality. But the the end result is usually the same. And it's that people end up 
having so much shit that they didn't have to work hard for that the game becomes boring or uh, people use it as an excuse to not work on the parts of their game that they need to and they quit and either way it's bad that's my take How much more life force do I have? I bought 5.4 million life force. I also bought 1,250 Krejcik Chimerals, which is about, I don't know, 12 mirrors of Krejciks. Uh, 1,000 divines of life force. Oh, more than that. 1,200 divines of life force. We had 300. So we've done 140 augments, actually. You can see exactly. I had 300 sacreds, so... <clears throat> <laughs> Come on, man. Give the kid a bro. Are you what the fuck? That's five in a row that I removed merciless. One in three, one in nine, one in twenty seven. 181, 1 in 243. 0.04%. Fucking game. Yeah, fuck you, Divines. I didn't need you anyway. Pay for my metamods like a real man. An ethical SSF gamer. Whoop! Stuck my dick. Ethical. Ethical. Who's ethical? Your boy's ethical. You. Yeah. Oh, fucking ethics, baby. Whoever thought. <laughs> All right. There we go. Everybody say, hey, we want some ethics. <laughs> um, if you guys were here earlier, I'm sure some of you haven't, weren't, because it's um, it's been a couple hours. However, we agreed, we agreed when I started doing this, because I smoke, and it always bothers people when I go to smoke. I was like, look, I won't take that many smoke breaks, but every time we go for an augment, I got to have a cigarette. So I get to go have a cigarette. <laughs> um, so I need five minutes, but we'll set it up first. And I'll be back in five minutes for the all. Prefixes. Um, as I mentioned, guys, from this phase right here, so we're augmenting for um, hybrid. Um, to hit either tier one or tier two is a one in 60. To hit tier three, about one in 25. Um, thus far, we have augmented in total one six uh 13 14 times so again eventually you get it hopefully that eventually is this time eventually always comes if you never give up right and that's uh as i was talking about earlier the never giving up parts usually where where people lapse but tend to tend to stick things through so uh, that being said, I do need a short break here, a couple minutes to have a cigarette, per our agreement. Per the terms of our contract, black lungs matter. So, yeah, uh, producer can change. Julio, see you guys in a sec. Is my food cold? Yes, it is. All right. Sick. I forgot my phone, and I'd also like three more fucking cold french fries, because... Cochon.
Ballers and ballerettes. Let's be realistic here. Ballers. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do here is hit that. Oh, oh my God. Wait, I have prefixes. Can't be changed. It still could be okay. Still could be okay. All right. I don't have chat open right now, but I imagine I'm getting laughed at. Oh my God, boys, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Oh, we're so fucking lucky. Holy shit. Oh, I mean, I have to spend a couple divines, but oof. fuck me. That is lucky. Mistakes were made. Zug zug. Okay. Whew. Smoking again? No, it's okay. I forgot to press my control F. So I have I have the uh, rejects, right? So I'm very much used to just having that there. When I saw the fizz, my mind was like, all right, we're going to do that. And then I was going to show you the past results. Yeah, so, okay, now I'll do that before clicking this time. Actually, no, I'll do it. Okay, the augment is in. All right, so the last, the last, um, oh, wait, sorry, I gotta mark this down. We hit flaring 17 times, augments on flaring seven. Uh, we got flaring on our fifth tab, and our total augments are two. All right, so the last, guys, we've augmented three times um, since I've started this uh, session here. And uh, we hit Fizz Leech, so we've augmented Flaring twice, and we augmented Conquerors once. Uh, we hit Fizz Leech and Fizz Leech again on the Augment on the Flaring, and then we hit Mana Leech on the Augment on the Conquerors, which is uh, a 21% chance to do it on Flaring, followed by a 21% chance, followed by a 12.5% chance. So if we hit uh, the, the combined, the probability of that happening sequentially like that is one half of 1%. So if we hit leech again right here, we are then talking about times 0.21. We are talking about, that would be 1%. That would be one tenth of 1%. We are talking about one one hundredth of 1%. If we hit leech again. No fucking way. One percent, ten percent, one percent, one tenth of one percent. That is a one in a thousand. Oh, sorry. One in nine hundred. That is the guys. The odds of that happening are five times less likely than augmenting P one. Five times more unlikely. Mm. Uh, T1 dictators, like T1 hybrid, as in making the best bow possible. Uh, the best bow possible would be five times more common than that happening. Okay. Quitters don't. Hey. 
Players get nowhere. That's why. Fucking ethics, baby. Ethics. Ethics. Hey, Karumba. All right. Ethical. Mana leech. Annulls after augment eight point five out of eight. Augments three. Back for another round, and we already have the multi mod, which is nice because we don't have to pay for all of the uh, meta mods again. <clears throat> Just one of them. Okay, so we're now sitting at. Uh, as I mentioned, that uh, was a one fuck my phone keeps closing again. Sorry, guys, let me pull you back up here on chat. What are the odds now? <laughs> yeah, unfair. <laughs> uh, make the dream come true. Yeah, I, I, I was talking, I, was, I think I've, I, you know, if any of you have watched The Secret, clearly, manifestation, vision boards. We're going to make a vision board on microsoft paint because my computer is seven years old and because i am much older than that all right paint Okay. Speak it into reality, boys. Whoop, what's this guy want? Ooh, damn, 45 divs. Murder boy. <laughs> How is it now? Ooh, I, did I press augment already? I can't remember. Yeah, I understand. Thank you for clarifying for fucking 12 times. All right, where's my feral furs collection? There, oh, er, 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 there it is. Wait, how many times was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Think I give a fuck about your fortified divines? Shit. We'll raise the price on the market. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Pushy, pushy, pushy. 
45. All right, so, so far we've got, what, what is that now? 8,861. So 14 mirrors. All right, let's get a little bit more good vibes, a little vision. <laughs> Press play. There we go. Chat's up. Good vibes only. Good vibes only. Ooh, more divines. Sorry, guys. I know you want me to mouse over, but I want some money. My tabs are all named over things that Janubu has said. React clown and get banned. Uh, except for perfect motor boating size. That's not Janubu. That's because we got two C's in here. Preacher Camaro. Two C's, perfect motor boating size. <laughs> 300 plus 200 is the same as 500. We protect the community. No, no, no. It was Varga that RMT'd. This also wasn't him. Uh, unless he was looking down at his... While he was peeing. Um, this was... This was his ban reply about me. And uh, this was what he told people who left my guild and uh, left my Discord. He said it wasn't enough to just do that. They had to denounce me. So if you tell us, you no longer support him. We need you to... Is this guy coming or no? Come on. Kind of busy. Coming or no? Is this guy just going to sit here all day? Fucking MTX level 6,000. Character level, 70. Manners level, 7. Okay, somebody was telling me there's a trick to get people out of my hideout. Because some people are dicks and like to just sit there all day. You annoy me. Oh, there he goes. Bye, Felicia. Okay. I guess he's not buying the gloves. All right, let's see it, boys. A little bit more vibe check, vibe check, vibe check. And let's go. I could have sworn to God I pressed augment. Did I not press augment before? I'm pretty sure I pressed augment. Okay. Not what I wanted, but at least it's not mana leech. Tier 6 hybrid. T6 hybrid. Annulls after 9. So we have prefixes can't be changed. Yep. Just gotta get rid of that. <clears throat> Move. Oh, bummer. We'll exalt it out just because we've got the flaring. It's like a one in a bajillion chance. No, okay. All right, back to it. One day, I spent 200 hours at the beginning of the league over two weeks using 21 mirrors trying to craft this. I've got what is it? 15 mirrors in on it now. Probably spent uh, about 60 hours this week on this. So. It'll happen one day. Don't give up. Usually the the only thing that separates the winners and the losers, the most common element. Common denominator. Hey, yeah, yeah. It's it's I mean it's obvious, like you know, to not get fucking emotionally invested in stuff like this, especially when you're aware of how uncommon it is, uh, or unlikely it is to whatever, but uh Sometimes some things are like, like getting fucking leech four. What was it four times in a row? Or five? Was it four or five? Things like that. You're like, come on, man. Still don't give up, right? That you did, but you know, it's good sometimes to take breaks too. Like as I mentioned, after today's stream, I have to go away for the weekend. To see, I don't have to. I want to see my family. I haven't seen them in some time. They don't live in the same country, so 
They actually called me a bunch this week, and I didn't I didn't make the time to see them because I was doing this. So, uh, I uh, oh. Perfectly rolled champions. I thought it was tier three. I'm not gonna stop if we hit this, but I'm just curious to see how it goes. I'm not even gonna mark down the fucking data, but I've already hit this bow twice. I've, I've hit T1, T1, T3. Sorry, T1, T1, T4. I've hit fucking. I didn't get it anyway. I've hit T1, T4. T1, T4. Um. I don't even know why I'm doing that. It's a complete waste of money. I could do it again right here, but we're not stopping on T4. Uh, I hit that bow twice in 10 minutes. T1, T1, T4. Twice in 10 minute period. Uh, your channel. You're going to bed? Hey, have a good night, buddy. Uh, here, I, I posted it up. Uh, if you guys are curious, uh, I basically use my community section. So if you look on my uh, the, the YouTube. Uh, oh, by the way, I found out that it really impacts the algorithm if people subscribe. I find it kind of gross to ask people to like and subscribe. So um, I'm not going to request it, but it does help me out. So if you do want to see this stuff in the future, um, that's, uh, that does, that does uh, give me a hand. But um, in any case, whether or not you do, if you look at this, uh, the community section here, um, uh, I use it kind of like a Twitter feed because I don't use Twitter or anything like that. And I can't post my items on um, Reddit or anything because of uh, I was banned from Reddit for somebody else posting one of my videos, and apparently that was me brigading. And then somebody told Janubu to go kill himself, and apparently I'm responsible for the people who are in my Discord. So those two things got me permanently banned from Reddit, so I can't post up there. So I use it all here, but here you can look at this. So uh, it doesn't show the minutes on this, but eight hours ago, shoot. Eight hours ago, uh, there we go, 286 with 47. So that's T1, T1, T4. And then if you look here again, eight hours ago, 276, T1, T1. So we actually hit a T1, T1, T4 twice in a 10-minute period. Um, I also actually hit that um, the sixth day of the league. As, as I mentioned, I spent 200 hours crafting this um, uh, for the first uh, couple weeks when the when there was actual race. Right, right now, you know, I'm pushing because, like, I have other people's money involved and I don't want to let people down, but there's no there's no real like foot deadline, right? Uh, at the beginning of the league, obviously you're you're racing to make the first one, um, and after that it's kind of zero sum, right? If somebody else makes it, it's really not following worth falling through. So I went pretty hard going after it. These are all the rings. I, I mirror crafted seven rings as well in a week, actually following the bow. Uh, you can see here as well. I also have T1, T1, T4, and this was uh, what well, says a month ago, but it was right at the first week of the league. Um, you can see that one's six white. But, um, yeah, so I've hit T1, T1, T4 three times already, and I've annulled it or augmented it, or sorry, i uh, scoured it three times, so. Oh, T1 Chaos. What's up, Snoobay? Um, yeah, it, there's no point for us to even augment when it's at that. I was just kind of doing it just, you know, partially out of, like, a curiosity, but also I think it's kind of fun for you guys when you see something like that, so. But, again... Reminding myself that I have some other people's money. Uh, I shouldn't do stuff like that. So we'll just keep it to keep it to what we're looking for. What the fuck? Oh, you guys can't see the display? Fuck, I've been showing stuff on that the whole time. Uh, I, my game is closed. I can't. Streamlabs just crashed. It's been crashed the whole time. The entire time I've been streaming, Streamlabs was crashed, and if I press OK, it will close the stream. I don't know what's wrong with Streamlabs, but it has been doing this all day. So I can't adjust anything on stream. I didn't realize that. Anyways, what I was showing you was the, my YouTube page. Um, if you go, uh, like, when you open it, it says, like, Home Video Shorts Live Playlist Community. Uh, if you go to the community section, it's like a... It shows all of my crafts as well as some like updates and blah, blah, blah. But if you go look there, you'll see earlier uh, a few hours ago, I hit those bows I was referencing. Um, and if you, while you're there, throw the kid a sub, I'd appreciate it. But nonetheless, let's get back to business. 
I didn't realize I was normally I have screen capture on. So I didn't realize uh thank you for telling me that because I think on several occasions I've tabbed out to show you guys things, so I won't do that anymore. <laughs> Your attempts to help a futile. Grab some more imprints. This is like such a this is such a minor thing to complain about, but I don't like how far I have to drag my mouse right now. <laughs> we we'll definitely go all the way over here. Whoop! Is that right there? Yes, I do. Double corrupting. You could single corrupt. You could put a fucking. You could put a gilded fossil on here to add um, item cells for more defenders, and you could corrupt it and get plus one arrow. Technically, uh, but double corrupting would be pointless because it would remove one of the uh, one of the other implicits. A single corrupt could make it good though. Uh, they would have to hit a one in four. So you'd have to get the actual implicit. So one in four, and then it would have to be another one in four. So one in 16, you'd have a one in 16 on an item I've spent 37 mirrors crafting to add an implicit. And then for the plus one arrow, it's like one in 90. So we'd have like a one in fucking eight, 2000 fucking chance, but YOLO, right? And nobody else could ever mirror it because it's corrupted. Oh baby. Daddy's coming home with the cake. This will be my day. Yeah, we'll see, man. It's okay if it's not. Do my best. Uh oh, what the fuck? I bought ten of these. Am I really out of ten of them? What in the flying fuck? That's annoying. Uh did I add the eight tips in there? I have a forty-five. Yeah, I have a forty-five. <laughs> yes yeah, so, so far time wise guys i've spent about 265 hours 260 hours uh over 10 uh 10 days close to tw close to 11 calendar days crafting fizzbos this this league and uh we're up to 37 mirrors now on the then that's combining the one that i started on early league as well as this so um, it's uh, it's no easy task, but sometimes you get lucky. TFT crafted their three T one bow for seven mirrors, which is more less than we've spent today <laughs> alone. So they got very lucky, but our day will come. Uh, what did I need here? I needed uh, Krachen. What's the most I spent on a craft? Fifty-one. To, I spent fifty-one mirrors crafting a power charge ring that has four charges on it in Sentinel League. I destroyed twenty-eight power charge synthesis rings, and I destroyed four rings that had two power charges to recombine them. But now I own the only four charge, so frenzy power, endurance, and another power charge ring in the game. I have eleven rings that have four charges on them. As well, I own two of these, which are both one of. Oh. Which one of these is Asian name? Asian name. Uh, hopefully he can answer this. How many do you have? Um, oh, which one of these guys? Fuck, I can't tell these names apart. Oh, is that the right one? Wait, this is I don't know. I picked the wrong guy. Fuck, I lost fucking... I understand people are from different parts of the world, but I feel like it's completely antithetical to human interaction to have people with names that are not in the same character alphabet. It's completely, it's, it's literally impossible to distinguish for me, for me and most people that play the game in English. Like I don't have these options on my keyboard. 
if I was trading this guy or this guy, there is no way I know which one is which to the point that that interaction is completely meaningless. If that person scans me, I won't know to not visit him again. Uh, uh, and if, uh, you know, he's really nice and helps me out, I add him to his friends list. If I have, like, three friends with fucking Asian character names, I don't know who they are. Not to mention, I can't type his name in chat. Um, and that's not, that's not, like, a xenophobic thing. I just, I find it very odd that they wouldn't separate servers by, uh, at least by fucking, uh, the same character alphabets. It's also exceedingly difficult, as I'm sure most of you know, trading with uh, someone who doesn't speak the same language. When you have, like, specifics, right? Like, you want to haggle, or if you need change, or you want to buy more than one of something. Stuff like that. The characters, specifically, though. The, the people not speaking the same language, whatever. I mean, people are from different places, but... Having it built into the, the game where you can't possibly even recognize who someone is, it seems like an odd choice. Uh, as opposed to, like, sorry, when you juxtapose that against the um, the commentary that, like, player interaction and friction are an important element, and that, like, having a trading, like, an auction house or something would be too automated, and it's, like, that player, like, that interaction is completely automated. I don't know what he's saying. He doesn't know what I'm saying. I don't know who he is. I'm sure... I know more people speak English than the inverse, but... Weird. Uh, right here, guys, the reason we're doing the aspect is because you can see... Oh! Two. Seven. Oh, there you go. Uh, you can see we have... We annulled off the three crafted mod. Um, but we, we successfully annulled off whatever it was that we regaled or augmented there. Um, but we can't add three crafted mods here, and we can't exalt because it could hit a prefix. So by putting on aspect of the crab, we suffix lock. So it, it plays the same role that um, a three a multi mod does here, right? Because now we guarantee the uh, the augment to hit the prefix. Um, and also, as you just saw, the creations were three chaos each, whereas you know for me to to scour and multi mod two to one, so it saves us quite a bit of money. But you don't hit it that often. I've done it. Well, I bought 10 earlier, so that's our 11th time. So using the aspect there has saved us 22 divines, which, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things for this is not a lot. Uh, it's actually almost meaningless, but, you know, as an average player, I still get excited every time I get a sale, like, above five divines. So <laughs> doesn't matter if I'm spending. How much have I spent today? Or, sorry, the past two days? 8,861 divines. Um, what do we need now? Peace. So guys, uh, just as a heads up, I think uh, it's three in the morning for me here now. Um, I've got uh, to see my family tomorrow, as I, I mentioned. Um, I also ordered food an hour ago, uh, which is probably completely cold. Actually, it's two hours ago, I think now. Um, I'm going to do the rest of the imprints we got here, okay? And then I'm, I'm going to probably go to bed after that. We'll eat and then go to sleep. Um, just so everyone knows. But we still got 10, 20, 30, 37 more. Um, no, it's okay. That's not that's not till we're done here. I'm going to be probably another hour. But just letting you know that. Because like otherwise, this that'll be the end of this entire stash tab. Right? And if I don't... Like, once this is done, I have to go run 144 more imprints. Like, I have to go down to the fucking menagerie. And do the imprints 144 times like that alone takes like fucking 45 minutes so and then if i was to do it again it would take like another three hours so it's either i ended at like 3 30 a.m or i stay up to like 7 a.m and then go and see my parents at like 10 it's just not i don't think that's really feasible plus i've been doing this since like 2 p.m yesterday so we're already at like 13 hours i'm just letting you guys know though so it doesn't you know that you don't uh, you're not uh taking it back when i'm like okay bye <laughs> or, or in case we like lose those and I have a bad circle of RNG and it seems like I'm rage quitting. Just letting you know ahead of time. But we still, as I mentioned, it's a 1 in 40 uh, when we do this augment. So at, at this stage right here, every time we do this, it's a 1 in 40 for us to hit either a tier 1 hybrid, tier 2, sorry, tier 1 hybrid, tier 2 hybrid, or tier 1 uh, flat fizz. So flaring. Um, and we have 37 more there. We just had 38. So 
there's uh, there's still a reasonable chance we get another crack at the uh, you know what our uh, final goal is here. Um, had some bad luck obviously with the augments so far. Whoa! Oh. There is nothing in the world that is more troll than a max roll temper. When you have 25, look at that. I saw 89 and I was like, oh, daddy's being ethical. And then it's like, nope. That shit's just being multiplied by 1.23. Your eyes deceive you, you sneaky son of a bitch. Ugh. Fucking max roll temper. Ugh. 26th time we've hit that. Not the max roll, but tempered. Or tempered, sorry. Okay, get rid of that. Nope. <laughs> that would have been a nice uh, little sequence. Oop. That would have been a nice little, su not surprise. Um, you know, we're talking about how we might, you know, we're fucking, we might get a chance and then we hit it. Would have been a little serendipitous moment. But alas, it was not meant to be. Natural temper, very sneaky. Hell yeah. It is indeed. It is indeed. Holy cow, there's 137 people here. Is that right? Sorry, my, my phone's on my... Uh, my chat's on my phone. It's really small. I haven't had chat. Like, I don't have... Uh, I can't have... Streamlabs has crashed, so I, I, can, I, I can't see how many people there are normally. I didn't realize there were so many of you. What up? What up, chat? Well, now that I know that there weren't fucking, we've got 137 people. It's time for me to start fucking. I gotta start acting like a streamer. Yo! What up, homies? Like and subscribe. Alright, so today we're gonna do a fucking opening of 162,000 stack decks. Followed by... Corrupting 11 of your mage bloods hit me up to give me your mage bloods and then we're gonna do We're gonna talk about a fucking hidden secret fucking technique about this crazy build That none of you know about and a fucking farming strategy that's gonna make you rich All right, so tip number one you're gonna want to play With fucking altars. All right, you're gonna get rich off these altars all right, so here's an edited clip of 30 seconds of, um, you know, in gear that's not mine with and a mirror drop that's from three leagues ago. And for our secret build, we're going to be playing Tornado Shot, but it's got a fucking twist. We've got an MTX on it. All right. Algorithm says it's time. See you tomorrow, chat. Uh, and for the occasional fan, <coughs> hello. All right, we're going to talk about... Um, Hmm, today we're gonna look on POB. Looks like, wow, looks like we've got some numbers here. It's gonna be a big one. P.S. Belton is a scammer. You can trust me, my highest character is level 94, and I have three whole divines. Fuck, I broke my webcam. She's getting upset because I haven't put her in under nasal mode. Uh oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. Uh. Mm -hmm. You can trust me, I knows a lot. Yes, I does. Alright, let's keep crafting. Where did Sir Gog come from? Sir Gog made a... Uh, when TFT started banning people from my Discord, Sir Gog went on a tirade on um, on Reddit, which I was banned. I've never talked to him in my life before. I didn't even know who he was. But he went on to... he 20 Because I looked at his Reddit post. He had, he had posted on 27 different things. Talking about how everyone associates with me is a scammer and the people in my guild should not be traded with because they should not be trusted. Um, and that if anyone who trades with anyone from my Discord, which has 4,000 people in it, or my guild, which has 200 people in it, most of whom are people that uh, just messaged me from YouTube that wanted a community to play with and said all of them were scammers. 
And then people told me he had like fucking 35,000 people who follow him on YouTube or some shit. And I was like, okay, so this guy obviously has a platform. So obviously I took it to heart that I was like, yo, say whatever you want about me because all my shit's on video. I've got, like, I can point to it. Um, but I was like, you know, the, the, those other people, like, especially like, I mean, 4,000 people in my fucking Discord and the 200 people in my guild, largely who, a lot of them who are new players who probably watch his content. I was like, that's fucking fucked. So I got kind of pissed about it. And then um, before I, I was going to like send him a, a, like a big fucking like what's wrong with you kind of thing. And then I looked up, uh, I had the foresight to go and look at his profile. Like I did like a search Sir Gog PoE and it showed his PoE profile. And I looked at his character from the league and his highest character that he had at that point. This is from last league. was a level 94 and it had about two and a half divines worth of gear on it. And so... I, I just, I sent out a message to the Discord and just said, guys, like, I know who, some of you know who this is, but I wouldn't be worried. Uh, and I just linked the profile and then, like, the little crying face emoji got fucking, like, responded to. Like, fuck. I didn't say anything else. I, I just said, guys, don't worry about it. And I linked the profile and it had a little crying emoji, like, uh, yeah, like a hundred times. But I, I, I you know, I just kind of clout on them because I thought that was wildly inappropriate. But also, I mean, the, the camera angle, I, I made that joke a couple times and uh, somebody told me that he switched his camera angle after which I found funny, um, but no, I I don't have a personal relationship with him. I you know I can't speak to his whatever. Uh, although I you know I, I did think it was rather ironic for someone who's about two and a half divines of year to comment on the inner workings of the economy to the point that they felt it was appropriate to disparage anyone that had an association with me, given the fact I've played the game for ten years and have interacted with literally hundreds of thousands of people. Um, <clears throat> 